Fans filing into the Georgia Dome. It's Mike Vick in his national television debut. The Falcons at home against Cincy. What do you mean? Standing tall. Are you kidding me? Oh, 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 what a play by Mike Vick. My Michael Vick. Vick. This is Vick. The future of the Atlanta Falcons is number seven. Michael Vick has the talent to give his team a chance to win every time out. He makes his prime time debut tonight as the Falcons host the Cincinnati Bengals. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick. It's great to have you with us. The Bengals have been so bad for so long that optimism is a rare commodity. But in training camp this year, the coaches and the players were actually talking about the playoffs. Optimism is one thing. Reality is another. After an 0-2 start, they have to win tonight, and they know it. So do the Falcons. They have played well enough to win their first two games. Instead, they've suffered a pair of heartbreaking defeats. But one thing is for sure. The Falcons will scare opposing defenses to death this year, Joe, if for no other reason than they have the amazing Michael Vick. Oh, Mike, I got to tell you, Michael Vick was a guy I loved a couple years ago coming out of college. Just watching him work on film was incredible. The way he threw the football, the tightness of the spiral, the athletic ability, the quickness the quickness of the release all those things you need to be a success at a quarterback he was absolutely great coming out of college but this business is a learning process and for Michael Vick as he told me on Friday one of the things that he has to learn is I can't keep taking as many hits as I've taken or else I'm not going to be around to help this ball club so that's something he'll want to work on tonight and you know Paul when you got a guy like Michael Vick and everybody out there tonight I promise you as the night goes on we'll see Michael and they're going to go, wow, he's really something. He's a wow kind of football player. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals, they may not have a wow guy, but, boy, they've got themselves one workhorse in Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon is one of the best backs in the National Football League. He's big, he's strong, and he's nasty. You know, each week we talk about linebackers are going to smack you in the mouth. Corey Dillon, when he gets the ball, I think he, he feels he's a linebacker. He wants to hit somebody in the face. First five years with the Bengals, he rushed for over 1,000 yards each year and on a team, the Cincinnati Bengals, who had five losing seasons. Now, if Cincinnati Bengals are going to have a chance to win this football game tonight, Michael. Corey Dillon not only has to have a good game, he has to have a great game. All right, thank you, Paul. When we come back, Susie Colbert joins us with one of the game's most exciting players, the Falcons, Michael Vick. This is Vick. Welcome back to Atlanta. When opposing players talk about Michael Vick, they mention his arm and his strength, but mostly they talk about his remarkable speed. In short, Susie, he gives them fits. <laughs> well, Mike, it goes beyond speed. One Bengal actually compared his elusiveness to Barry Sanders, but as a quarterback, what have you learned about trying to protect yourself? Well, that's the main thing I have to do right now is protect myself. I won't be playing this league too much longer. So, you know, that's part of my plan tonight. I plan on, you know, getting what I can get and getting down. How have you managed to change the mindset that you don't have to do everything all the time? Well, it's been a long process of doing that all year, just realizing that I don't have to do everything. And uh, all I have to do is make plays and get the other players involved. And that's what, I, that's what I plan on doing tonight, getting other players involved. You know, just relaxing and playing football the way I know how to play. The Bengals are so tired of being ridiculed. They are desperate to win this game. How crucial is it for the Falcons? They're desperate. We're desperate. Somebody got to come out here with a win. And I hopefully, hopefully it'll be us. Best of luck. Thank you. Mike. Thank you, Susie. Takeo Spikes, the leader of the Bengals defense, says this is not just another game. It's a chance to change everyone's perception about his team. Look each other in the eye and say, I just have nothing left, baby, because we don't leave it all on the field, dog. Hey, this is our chance right here to it's change on. the whole perspective of the way they think about the Bengals, dog. Hey, let's start this season off right for each other. Let's win go. on three. One, two, three. Win. 
I'm looking at your portfolio right now. You gotta buy. Yes, time for picking, time for I'm buying. Do a super, super strong buy. I think you should buy. I think you should buy. It's a buy. Buy it. Just buy. It's a no-brainer. I'd sell. <laughs> Did I say sell? No, no, I meant buy. Buy, yes! There's never been a better time for Schwab Equity Ratings, a way to help you decide what to sell as well as buy. A through F ratings on 3,000 stocks, not influenced by investment banking. To learn more, call 1-800-9-SCHWAB. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Sixty-five thousand plus at the Georgia Dome for the Bengals and the Falcons. Dick LeBeau has been in the NFL for 40 years as a player and a coach. He's in his second full season as the Bengals head man as he tries to claim change this club's direction. Dan Reeves now in his sixth year with the Falcons. He has taken three different teams to the playoffs. 188 career wins. That is number seven on the all-time list. And there's the guy everybody pays to see, Michael Vick. First round draft pick a year ago out of Virginia Tech. One thing about him that everybody says when you ask other coaches, Joe, about him, they said they have never seen a quarterback that they can remember in the National Football League that's faster than he is. Just foot speed. There aren't any. There aren't many backs that are faster than he is. There aren't many wide receivers that are faster. That's Neil Rackers. The third year kicker out of Illinois as the Falcons will get the ball first. And Travis Jer Jervy, who leads the NFL in kick returns, takes it at the seven. Tremendous speed. Jervy up the middle of the 29. Michael Vick is the man that everybody's been talking about, and of course the Bengals will have to focus on. He has to come up with 2,500, excuse me, 20, 250 combined yards. He's that dangerous, whether it be running the football or throwing the ball. That's what he needs to do tonight. Two of the guys that are responsible for containing him. Justin Smith will have to stay in his rush lane to make sure Michael doesn't escape. And if he does, to Keo Spikes, he's the man that's going to have to mirror Vick and spy on him as he tries to maneuver up the field. Falcons come out with two backs, Dunn and Duckett, and two tight ends. Now they split Dunn out as a wide receiver. T.J. Duckett with the first carry to the 30. Well, the one thing I like about the Falcons are starting with T.J. Duckett. This is a big back, and here's a guy that we know that is going to play a lot more tonight than he has in the first two games. There is a flag on this play. This offense of the Falcons, they realize that Michael Vick's the guy, but they certainly need some help. The guys up front are going to have to protect him. Unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting, defense, number 99, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. That's Oliver Gibson, one of the defensive tackles, and what a way for the Bengals to start. A 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the first play from scrimmage. You can see the coach saying, think. You know, it's one thing to overcome penalties, but when you talk about stupid penalties, that is a stupid penalty. What are you trying to accomplish? You're not intimidating anybody. Spot the ball at the 46, first down, Falcons. Dunn splits out again. Vic to throw, Warwick Dunn, flanker screen. And he takes it up near midfield. Brought down by Vaughn Booker. Defensively, the Bengals are going to have to certainly play a contained style of defense. Their defensive tackles are going to have to get pressure up the field. They play a four-down lineman. Their ends are going to have to contain Michael. They can't let him get outside. The linebackers, I think, have the biggest chore because not only do you have to worry about Vic, but the backs as well. And the secondary, if Vic does break the pocket, they're going to have to stay with the receivers and not give up the big plays. You mentioned the linebackers. Spikes and Simmons are outstanding players. Vic goes to the shotgun. Four-man rush. Good protection for Vic, and he rifles it over the middle to Jackson. 
Jackson down to the 32 yard line. Simmons and Ross make the tackle. But Jackson, who had career highs in New Orleans a year ago, catches the strike over the middle. You cannot give any quarterback this much time. But when look, watch Michael Vick stand there. There is nobody even close to him. Look at this. He's got all the time to throw the ball, find his receiver. It's, it's footwork that allows him to be able to do it. If he can stay balanced, he doesn't make the air and throws. And, of course, Willie Jackson gives them that element of speed and size, about 210 pounds. Bob Christian, number 44, is in as the Falcons fullback. Dan Reeves said he's the best blocker he's ever seen. May have been some movement up front, and Duckett will be brought down by the middle linebacker, Brian Simmons. Now will check the penalty. Looked like Cincinnati may have jumped, yeah, and they zone. did. Yeah, neutral zone deal. Offside, defense, number 94. That's Tony Williams, and you can see Dick LeBeau saying, all right, settle down. Yeah. You know, you've got two teams here that haven't won a game, and they don't have a whole lot of fans <laughs> because they want to see these guys win. And then here you are in Atlanta from Cincinnati, and you're making all these mental errors you can't afford to do. Two penalties on the opening drive, and the ball is advanced to the 27. It will be first and five. Crumpler, the tight end, lines up as the fullback. Here they come. And Warwick Dunn trying to cut it outside. Excellent move by Dunn. He turned a two or a three yard loss into a couple yards on the positive side. Warwick Dunn is the man that the Atlanta Falcons brought in to add some playmaking ability and a compliment to Michael Vick. They liked his speed, they liked his ability to get outside. They addressed him as a perimeter style runner, and that's what you saw. His ability to start to the middle of the formation and then get to the edge. Played his first five years in Tampa, played on a badly sprained toe last year. Probably shouldn't have gone, but the doctors told him it might not get better even if he sat out for six weeks. So he played. Duckett comes in, the big rookie running back, powers his way close to a first down. T.J. Duckett is in the ball game. He's already touched the ball three times. Last week uh, in the game against Cleveland, he only touched it five times, and they were all in the first half. What the Falcons have done is they've set it up now that he has specific packages that he is a part of. They will not allow it again to happen that that kid goes in and doesn't touch the football enough times to be an impact player. Well, the big problem was a week ago with Dunn in the game. They had second and one, third and one, and they gave the ball to the little Warwick Dunn instead of T.J. Decker who's sitting on the bench, and this guy's a load. You've you got to know he's going to get the ball. Duckett on third and one. Didn't well, giving it to the big guy didn't work either. But, you know, you don't run the big guy off the corner. You run the big guy straight ahead. That time they got an angle from Tony Williams, number 94, to make the tackle. But don't stretch this guy out. I don't care who was in the backfield. He wasn't going to make yards. It's penetration by Cincinnati's defensive line that makes the play. The thing about it is, though, Joe, when you got a guy that big, you've got to get his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. When he's running sideways and his shoulders aren't parallel with the line, he can't, he has no power. Jay Feely will come on for the field goal. He has struggled at home only 61.5%. This will be from 44 yards. And it's good. So the Bengals defense holds and forces the field goal drive and Atlanta takes a 3 nothing lead. The Falcons aided by a couple of penalties went 46 yards and the drive resulted in the Feely 44 yard field goal for a 3 nothing lead. Brandon Bennett deep to return for Cincinnati from the five. Good blocking in front out to the 25 yard line and a flag comes in late. During the return holding 
Receiving team, number 62, 10-yard penalty, first down. That's Brock Gutierrez, an offensive lineman, and three penalties in five minutes and five seconds. Corey Dillon, 108 yards last week. He'll need that tonight. ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by the extraordinary NFL XL deal from Pepsi. Only at Pizza Hut. See participating stores for details. Toyota, get the feeling. Levi's low rise jeans, dangerously low. And Liberty Mutual, it's more than insurance, it's insurance in action. Aerial coverage tonight, courtesy of Bud Light. After the penalty, the Bengals backed up to the 13. Gus Farratt leads them out. Corey Dillon, the deep man in the eye. Corey Dillon on the toss, and here come the Falcons. They swarm him. Brady Smith led the charge. And this is the one thing you've got to do with Corey Dillon. Don't let him out of the backfield. Corey Dillon, he's going to, he wants to touch the ball between 25 and 30 times, which he will. He got it on the first play. But Keith Brooking is a guy that we're going to keep an eye on this evening. You're going to see this all night. He's got Corey Dillon. If he runs, you're going to see him in the hole. If he comes out in a pass play, you're going to see Keith Brooking covering him. Farrat to throw under pressure. Almost intercepted right in the hands of Jerron Bolden. It would have been the easiest touchdown he ever had. Farrat's trying to get to T.J. Hushmanzada, number 84 on the crossing pattern. Little bit of hesitation by Gus right there. Allows Bolden to make a break on the ball. You have to be decisive whether you're going in or coming out of your own goal line or whether you're trying to put it in theirs. You can't double clutch. Bolden is playing for Ray Buchanan, who's been suspended for four games because of the NFL steroid policy. And Farratt in a deep hole, and we have movement up front. They'll whistle the play dead. Willie Anderson, the right tackle, moved early. Fire in the snap. Ball start, offense, number 63, five-yard penalty, third down. Going to call it on the right guard, Mike Goff, but he had company. You know what I would do right now if I was Bob Bratkowski, the offensive coordinator of the Cincinnati Bengals? Just to calm this team down, I'd run the ball. I would not take a chance on dropping back, trying to throw it. I'd let my team settle down a little bit, punt it, let my defense get out there and play they go with four wide receivers. Throw out to the end zone. They'll whistle this play dead. Movement. Fire of the snap. False start. Offense. Number 72. After this is to the goal. Third down. That's Matt O'Dwyer, the left guard. The Bengals have a history of shooting themselves in the foot. We've only played five minutes and 44 seconds. Are already bullet riddled. Mike, they're running out of toes. <laughs> no, they're hitting themselves in the head now. This, I mean, this is ridiculous. I know it's noisy, but you've got to settle down and go on a quick count. Get them settled and get them out of there. Farad from the end zone. Good protection this time, and it's intercepted. Kevin Mathis with the pick. He just signed this week out of Texas A&M Commerce, a return of nine yards. All Kevin Mathis did was you sit in the middle of the field and watch Gus Farratt, and he just waited. I mean, this is, you know, it is great coverage. Watch in the middle of the field. He's watching Farratt, he's watching Farratt. Now watch a move he makes on the ball. No chance to complete this ball. He's playing short center field. You're absolutely right, Paul. His job was just to play the middle of the football field and keep an eye on where Gus Farratt wanted to throw the football. That's why you come out and run it when you've got third down and a ton. Boy, I agree with you, Joe. An absolutely hideous start for the Bengals' offense, the 14th straight game that that club has thrown in it, an interception. Duck it. Oops. Stacked up by Takeo <laughs> Spikes. Spikes is a guy... If you haven't had a chance to see him play, you love to watch him. There is no quit in this man whatsoever. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Takeo Spikes makes a play here, but T.J. Duck is going to wonder, are you supposed to block somebody? If I'm going to run back the other side, shouldn't somebody block somebody? Spikes has had over 100 tackles every year. 
and it's a real shame that he has not had a chance to go to the Pro Bowl. But when you play with the Bengals you don't get that much exposure and that's part of the voting process. Two tight ends for Atlanta. Vic short set goes out to his tight end Reggie Kelly makes his first catch of the year and rolled out of bounds by Ross and Artrell Hawkins. One of the things about Michael Vick is the hardest thing for Michael is to slow himself down. When I had a chance to sit with him on Friday he talked about things that he continues to work on and I believe he is a work in progress. The completion percentage is very nice. The touchdowns to interception ratio is nice. The good thing he's doing now is he's playing out of the pocket. The Bengals know that he's a threat to run and it'll allow him to operate out of the pocket and really orchestrate this offense instead of having to make plays. Christian and Duckett are in the backfield on third and ten. Vic under pressure throws complete Christian. Oh, they're going to have to settle. For, they're going to have to settle for another field goal. That's OK. Michael Vick is settling into the game. You know he's got a big play in him somewhere. He threw the ball where he was supposed to by staying in the pocket. Here he sets. Surveys the field, picks out the right receiver, makes a nice throw. That's OK. Put your defense out. Do the smart things. Hats off to that Bengals defense. They've been challenged twice and held and forced field goal tries. Feely, who was already hit from 44, will try from 26. The holder is Doug Johnson, the backup quarterback, and Feely is true again. Falcons extend their lead to 6-0 over the Bengals. First quarter from Atlanta. Back in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, it's been all Falcons so far. They've had two field goals, but only lead it six to nothing. Could have been much worse than that. It's been all Bengal defense. <laughs> the way it has. And Gus Farratt threw an interception on his opening possession. Could have been two. Brandon Bennett. Three yards deep, he'll bring it out. And he's taken down at the 18. Monday Night Countdown at 7.30 on ESPN is the best place to get ready for Monday Night Football. Then on ABC at 9, it is Monday Night Football. Marshall Falk and the Rams go to Tampa Bay to take on Warren Sapp and the Bucks. Will we see the 0-3 St. Louis Rams? I don't think so. Even though Tampa has given them fits, I just think they're too talented. And Marshall Falk is a very prideful individual. He'll take that team on his shoulders if he has to. You know, Gruden's listening to you. I know John's listening. All right. Should be a great game. I want you to know he's listening to you. Bengals from the 18. Dylan. Got back to the line of scrimmage no more. Let's check in with Susie Culver. Mike, what's particularly disappointing about their slow start tonight is after last week's loss, Farrat called a players-only meeting. He said to the guys, it's not about the coaches or what play is called, it's about us. He held himself accountable for the mistakes he's made. And he said, let's get everything out in the open. And a lot of guys stood up to a player. Every player I talked to tonight before the game said it has been their best week of practice, but it's just not showing here on the field yet. Boy, Susie, it certainly isn't. Fake the end around, and Dylan crosses the 20, gains about three, gang tackled by the Falcons. Just to follow up on what Susie said real quick, is that you also have to perform instead of just say things. And you can see that he's got to get the ball to the wide receivers. They're going to have to be able to make plays for him. And certainly that offensive line, they're going to have to listen better. If not, look at the ball. If it's too noisy and you can't hear Gus, then look at the ball. You've got to figure out a way not to go backward. Five interceptions for Gus Farad so far. One touchdown on the season. And a third and five for Cincinnati. Farrat double clutch. Throws late incomplete. Patrick Kearney was putting the pressure on. Had him, couldn't bring him down, but certainly affected the release. Gus Farrat has got his right thumb, thumb tape. You see the pressure inside once, twice. You know, it's just... It's not a good policy 
to start to throw once start to throw again and then throw the ball in the middle of the football field. It's it's something Gus is going to have to stop doing or there's going to be more interceptions. Damon Gibson is back for the punt of Nick Harris Gibson from the 26. Found the seam. <laughs> Still fighting for yardage to the 45. Nice return. The Falcons fighting for everything and they lead by six. We're at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta more than 65,000 on hand to see Michael Vick and the Falcons take on the Bengals so far good news for Atlanta they've kicked two field goals they lead six nothing Vick has been perfect four out of four 30 yards he has not attempted a run as yet he is the leading quarterback rusher in the NFL in fact is 15th overall in rushing including running backs coming into this game. Vic to throw pressure coming. Look at the speed he just sprints away from everybody and rifles one complete. Brian Finner and makes the catch. He makes it look so easy to get away. I'll tell you what looks so easy is Michael Vick getting to the outside being able to throw this ball. Now he's left handed he is going to his left. But watch how nice he escapes to the outside. But this is just great speed. That time you just can't let him get to the corner. And as he turns upfield, he everything is under control. His throw, look at the look at the flip. And I love the tightness of the spirals. Brian Finneran does an excellent job of working back towards Michael Vick to give him a target. And he's a big one at 6'5. Falcons again with two tight ends. Warwick Dunn picks his way through for close to five. Containing Michael Vick is a challenge. This is a game. This is the game last week with the Bears. What you're going to see is the way the Bears tried to contain Michael Vick and not let him get outside like we just saw. As he drops back, you see the ends come up the field with outside position. The tackle's still funneling him in. Right in the middle is Ted Washington. He does not leave the line of scrimmage. He wants to try and stop Vick from going up through the middle. As he starts to move, you see Ted Washington move and get in his way and force Michael Vick to make an off-balance throw when he had a receiver open for an incompletion. Second and six. Vick down the middle and too strong. It was intended for Willie Jackson, but a couple of yards over his head. You know the one thing about talking to Michael Vick that I really thought was cool? You know, I asked him about him calming himself down. He said, it's a problem. He said, and, and I got to control that. That's one of the things I had to do. He said, but, you know, when I played in college, they gave, they gave me 10 plays and said, go win the game. Well, yeah, he did. said, I did them. Five of them were passes. Five of them were runs. The five passes usually turned into three more runs. <laughs> I mean, I, but he's, he's that fast. He's that athletically gifted. And he's going to have to learn to channel that to be a good quarterback and not just a great athlete at the position. Patrick Sertain of the Dolphins, the great corner, said he's the best athlete in the NFL. Vick on the sprint out, has the first down on Trell. Hawkins tried to stop him, but he got to the sticks in time. Boy, I'll tell you what. Willie Jackson, number 80, gets a sensational block, and he's kind of helped Vick. Watch out here. Here, you'll see Vick coming, and look to the left of the screen. You're going to see somebody disappear right about now. There it is. What a nice block. First down Falcons. I don't think Dan Reeves has had a toy like this to play with. Yeah, he had he had John Elway, but even John would admit that he wasn't quite this fast. Oh, boy. And that time, Todd McClure, the center, did not snap the ball. And Tony Williams, one of the tackles, came across. <laughs> he snapped Vic's head. <laughs> He's doing everything he can to avoid getting hit. And he gets hit when the play doesn't happen. Ball start. Offense. Left guard. <laughs> Five-yard penalty. First down. Watch Vic. Boom. I mean, that's hands to the head. And the body. And every place well, else. I mean, you can't. First of all, you can't hit a quarterback in the head with your hands. Hey, I'm with you. 
Uh, hey. Well, if you're Todd McClure, you can't let everybody else go without snapping the ball either. <laughs> the center should know the snap count, shouldn't he? He's he's the one. He and the quarterback have to know it. Yeah, but we both had times where we've had to ask people. <laughs> <laughs> First and 15. Vic straight back. Pressure up the middle. Christian out in the flat. Can't make the catch. Let's go to Susie. Well, when Vic was awarded the starting job, he went to great lengths to prepare himself in the offseason for all the things that go with being a starting quarterback in the NFL. And as a soft-spoken guy, his communication skills were near the top of that list. So the team arranged for him to work with a speech coach, Gary Hankins from an L.A. group called Pygmalion. And, Mike, after this play, I'll tell you what they accomplished with him, which was quite a lot. All right, Seuss. Balls to 34. It is a second and 15 for the Falcons. Jackson and Finner in the wideouts. Crumpler the tight end. Here comes the blitz, and Vic will take it himself. Take him down at the 20. He thought about sliding. He thought about getting out of bounds, and I think he just got stuck on the field and took the hit. Watch the Bengals do what they're supposed to do. They all stay in their lanes, but the problem is, is you see Michael Vick is able to follow and move on out. Good blocking by the guys up front. And now it's just his speed. I personally think that Michael Vick trying to slide is going to get him hurt. I'd let him just try and get out of bounds or be an athlete and make plays. He doesn't know how to do it. And especially on turf, you can catch an ankle. He's run twice for 21 yards. Good play fake to Warwick Dunn. Vick down the middle. Touchdown, Fitter. was easy. Terrific job of play faking. Takeo Spikes gets trapped up front. Look at Vic stay in the pocket, and that's just a dart. Dan Reeves is calling the plays, and that was just a fine one. You couldn't have asked anything more from a quarterback. Great play fake, as you said, to hold the linebackers. Then he throws the strike. Perfect execution. Feely for the point after. And the Falcons are up 13-0 as Michael Vick throws his third touchdown pass of the season. They are loving it in Atlanta. The Falcons on top 13-0 over the Cincinnati Bengals. Vick, six out of eight, 65 yards. A touchdown. He's also rushed for 21. Stay in the end zone. Another good kick, and Bennett will do just that. He takes a knee, Cincinnati at the 20. Let's go back to Susie. Finish your story. Well, Mike, you can see how well the speech coach worked, right? Now, the goal was to make him a more powerful communicator because team management wants him to be the team spokesperson. Well, the difference in his approach to the media has been night and day, and more importantly now is how he projects in the huddle. Coach Reeves said before he couldn't draw a team off sides. He certainly can now. I thought he projected that projectile very well. <laughs> I love the way how he loud is, he throws the ball. He is projecting. <laughs> now, Susie's right. I noticed it in the conversation with him. He's a very soft-spoken young man. Levi Jones, the tackle, is in as the second tight end. He has not worked on any pass plays, and Gus Farratt is just creamed by John Theory. Holy cow, did he nail him. Well, Theory goes inside, and nobody picks him up. Watch this. On the right-hand side, look at Theory. Here's a linebacker just taking off. He's gone. That's one of those things you come to the sidelines and the coach, and you say the coach, in theory, he was supposed to be blocked. Well, I got news for you. He wasn't. There are his numbers for the season. One touchdown, five interceptions. If he continues to struggle, you have to think about where is John Kitten. Cincinnati's run seven plays. They have two yards. Corey Dillon gets two more. Now they got four. Moving right ahead. I mean, you know, the, the, the problem is, really, uh, we look at a guy that for the last five seasons had over 1,000 yards rushing in each season, and he's got 122 this year. But everybody in this building 
and especially the defense of the Atlanta Falcons, know that he's going to carry the ball. He's going to touch it between 25 and 30 times. He has to. He's your best player. And he's a wonderful running back. And he split out up top. Four man rush. Farad hangs in the oh. pocket and it's dropped by Peter Warren. Wide open, couldn't catch it. See, you can't, you just can't blame Gus Farad for that. When I talked to Bob Bretkowski, one of the things that he pointed out, the offensive coordinator of the Cincinnati Bengals, is that Peter Warwick has been a bit inconsistent with his hands. There's an excellent throw. He tries to one-hand it, and it just would, it just didn't happen. Another three and out for the Bengals. Damon Gibson is deep. From the 27. And horse collar and thrown down at the 33. A six yard return. Canute Curtis, who was the special teams demon, makes another tackle. Thursday night at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Quarterback Chris Ricks and running back Greg Jones lead perennial powerhouse Florida State against quarterback Dave Ragone and Louisville. That's on college football Thursday. For Peter Warwick, one of those FSU guys. Bobby Bowden would have been upset about that last play. I think, I think Bobby might have. That Bobby, you seen Bobby's hat lately? Come on, Bobby. It gets bigger, doesn't it? It does. It doesn't. To me, that's not a Bobby Bowden hat. Duckett is the running back behind Christian. And Duckett will get it. Rookie out of Michigan State rolls up near the 35-yard line. Bernard Whittington made the tackle yeah. for the Cincinnati Bengals. When you look at Atlanta running the ball, it's almost like, okay, <laughs> we're going to throw you a token run here and there, and then we're going to throw the ball. Dan Reeves, 38 years. Been calling plays, been around the game. Done a great job a lot of different places. Three wide receivers for the Falcons on second and eight. Back from the shotgun, draw play, Warwick Dunn. Warwick Dunn takes it up to the 40, gains five. And that wraps up the first quarter in Atlanta. It has been all Falcons, and they lead it 13 nothing. Sunday night football and Michael Vick has been on display. He has hurt the Bengals with his legs and his arm in the first quarter, and it's a 13-0 Falcon lead. The Falcons have had the ball in the first quarter. 11-11. 11. 11. 11 minutes, 11 four, seconds. Four aces. <laughs> yeah. And they are aces. The Bengals conversely have had it three minutes and 49 seconds and done absolutely nothing with it. It's a big third down for the Bengal defense, not just to slow down this Falcon offense, but to get themselves off the field so that they can get a little bit of rest. You look at Michael's completion percentage, done an excellent job. What is that? Is that 100%? Not quite, but close, Paul. We're working the math later. <laughs> Vic to throw, blitz coming, goes out to Finneran. He's taken out by Artrell Hawkins, but it's another first down for Atlanta, gain of 10. You know what's amazing? You know, we heard about it, and you sit here and watch it, and we had not seen this guy in person. They were talking about how, you know, his, his release looks very slow, but man, does that ball come out of there, and it is there in a hurry. And Gus Farratt, oddly enough, has, has really not had the protection that Michael Vick has had because Gus isn't the running threat that Michael is, so the guys are going to go after him on a more straight line. First down at midfield, two tight ends, a single setback. Here comes a corner blitz, and they'll whistle the play dead. Movement. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 86, five-yard penalty, first down. It's the first mistake for the Falcons. That was Brian Fenneran moving early. We talk about Michael Vick and how young he is in the National Football League, but you look at the passes that were thrown from the class of 2001. Drew Brees over 1,600. Chris Winkie over 1,100. Quincy Carter with Dallas. Marquez Tuiasosopo backing up in Oakland. And Michael Vick. Just 313 passes he threw in college. His arm doesn't have a chance to get tired yet. 
Plus, he hasn't seen as many professional routes, and he's still growing and learning. Done on the toss. Nothing there. Cuts it back and will lose a couple. Jack Burns, the quarterback coach of the Atlanta Falcons in his second season. It's interesting, the way he categorized Michael Vick, he said he's not a pitcher yet, he's still a thrower. And I thought that was very aptly put. Michael has a strong arm, and he's still muscling the ball out. They're working on those little pitches, those little dumps and crossing routes that he has to get better and better at. Yeah, but he's a big unit kind of thrower yeah. at this point. Randy Johnson's a big thrower, yeah. too, right? Yeah, he's turned into a pitcher, too. Vick solid in the pocket and incomplete in and out of the hands of Sean Jefferson. Right there was Case Vaharn. You know what I really like is what Wade Phillips, the defensive coordinator, said about this guy here. He said he is going to be great. There's no question about it. You see him in the pocket here. This ball is high and it's in a perfect spot. That's that's a catchable ball. The defender is the guy that made that 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 play go away. But but he was saying when well Elway came out of Stanford. You just knew that Elway was going to be a great player. He said when you look at Michael Vick Wade Phillips says you know he is going to be great facing a third and 17 here three man rush this time Vick steps up dumps it to Christian but that's a short gain shy of the 50 and he is blasted by Brian Simmons. That's still a good play Michael Vick had a chance to take off and run there was a flash of daylight. He pulled the ball down, make the throw, throw it to the receiver that's open. I think that's what Coach Reeves is telling him now. Look, good job. Look down the field, throw it, don't worry about it. Let our defense go play. That's why they call it a team sport. Two men deep for Cincinnati, Warwick and Hushman Zada. Chris Moore, the former Buffalo punter, hangs it high. They'll let it go and it just makes the end zone. 51 yard kick. Moore had a chance to pin them inside the five, but the coverage team didn't help him out very much. Watch Monday Night Countdown, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN, delivered by UPS. ESPN Sunday Night Football brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 37. Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Coors Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Cold down easy. And Avis, we try harder. And you're looking at the 70th annual North Georgia State Fair. A large hog, Deborah. Corey Dillon tries to take it outside, turns the corner, and Dillon will gain nine. He 13 yards and five carries. The passing game is non-existent. Farad 0 for 5 with an interception. You know, you know what's interesting talking to, to Corey Dillon, Joe, is is this thing right here. He said, "We, I know." that on every play there are going to be eight men in the box sometimes nine that's okay that's okay I still have to pick up the yardage and he says that's all right let's play yeah let's play play action by Ferrat looking for his first completion and going long incomplete he had Hushman Zada out there and missed him by a couple of yards Well, I like the call, though. I like the call. Hushman Zada was on top of the defense by about two steps, and Gus just dropped it two steps too far. Got right by Bolden. Well, that's one of the problems with this defense. What you got to do is, is, is get away from being a little lazy because you're, all you're worried about is Corey Dillon running the ball. They're throwing Farrakh, throwing short passes. They're going to get you deep once. Third and a yard. Two fullbacks in there to block for Corey Dillon. And he lowers his shoulder and gets it up past the 30. Let's go to Susie. 
Well, a lot of people would probably wonder why Corey Dillon would stay with Cincinnati. Well, he told us that this organization gave him an opportunity when many others wouldn't, and he felt that his career would be more meaningful if he stuck around and then they turned it around. He truly loves a lot of the guys on this team, and he also said he's learned a lot how to deal with losing, which he said before he couldn't do. Now he's unfortunately very experienced at it. Says he's become a leader on this team and just somebody you really admire for his not only his skill but his instincts to hang in there. There's an incomplete pass. Ashley Ambrose the coverage on Westbrook. Atlanta has a Atlanta hasn't really done as much as Cincinnati to themselves. Here's the throwing deep out of his own zen and Gus Farrakh gets picked off. Then Warwick he drops one. Now he tries to go down the field. Ball overthrown to Hushman Zada. The last one we saw Michael Westbrook put it on the ground. If you're a quarterback, you've got to have receivers make plays for you somewhere to help out. The fullback, Lorenzo Neal, gets only his second carry of the season. John Holosek, who was a star for Buffalo and is now with Atlanta, makes the tackle. Gus Farratt statistically 0 for 7 with the interception but in truth he's had a couple of them that have been dropped missed a couple of opportunities when I talked to Bob Rutkowski the offensive coordinator of the Bengals he said when it comes to thinking about switching a quarterback he's the son of one he's played the position you have to make sure that he's not the reason why things are going bad he beat out John Kitna and Akili Smith in training camp and from behind Brady Smith had a career high eight sacks a year ago had a great rush on this one coverage sack and when you hear about coverage sacks you're going to see it this is Brady Smith watch this here here comes Brady Smith off the corner Dylan goes out now when you don't block someone Richmond Webb is out there trying to block and you got Farrat standing in there as long as he was standing in there that's a coverage sack besides the offensive tackle didn't block. And Richmond Webb is a seven time pro bowler spent most of his career with Miami Damon Gibson fair catch on the return a punt of 35 and the fair catch. Michael Vick has been letter perfect so far and led his club to a 13 nothing lead. When the Bengals offense came off the field Gus Farratt was informed it looks like that he will no longer be in there John Kitten had told to warm up he goes down to try to fire up his wide receiving core. Of course and John Kitten played for Bob Rutkowski when Rutkowski was in Seattle and Kitten was there. He's a bit more familiar with the offense. He also went down the line and says please catch the ball please catch the ball please catch the ball. Something they haven't done yet. And block. Vic with a lot of time. Now he scrambles. Oh boy. And throws complete to Finneran. Once a quarterback buys his receivers that much time, somebody gets open. Well, I'm going to tell you what. It just embarrassed Wilson, number 55. Watch this. Look at here. Pink. I mean, when you grab air, that's air. That's all he got was air. Bernard Wilson tries to get by, and Michael buys enough time to be able to make the throw. This is what Michael Vick is capable of doing. He's capable of being able to keep a defense off guard because they can't attack him just in case he takes off running. So they have to lay back. Big first half for Finneran. Four catches, 61 yards. Now they go on the end around. Warwick Dunn reverses course. <laughs> nice run by Warwick Dunn. That's the second time tonight he's turned a loss into a game. You know, that reminds when I watch Warwick Dunn come around, it reminded me of one of those cartoons where you go, because <laughs> <laughs> he started to come around with it. Whoa, wait a minute. There's too many black shirts over here. Only thing that was missing was the dust, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you get the ball on the handoff, and all of a sudden you look up, and there's nothing but black shirts and nobody blocking for you. Get out of there. Warwick Dunn has fought the perception his entire life that he is too small to play at what other whatever level you could find of football. Michael Vick is going to have to hurry to get this play off. They're down to six seconds. He's probably going to wind up having to call a timeout. And does. And will take it with them as the Atlanta Falcons marching again already leading 13 nothing. This is Rich Eisen. Later on SportsCenter, running backs rush all over the NFL, one into the record book. 
The Chiefs take the Pats to the brink and a bogey Mars Tigers round, but not the tournament. Sports Center after Bengals Falcons on ESPN. Back in Atlanta, where the Falcons have a 13 0 lead on the Cincinnati Bengals. The Falcons offense at the Bengals 45 yard line. Dan Reeves has it going on all eight cylinders tonight. Christian and Duckett behind Vic on second and eight. Vic again with all day throws too high this time intended for Jackson. Corey Hall was right there with him. That's a good job by Cincinnati secondary. It's like when Michael drip, uh, Vic drops the linebackers drop to a certain depth and then they wait for things to happen. It's it's tough when you make a defense react all the time. But so far I think the Cincinnati Bengals defense has held off a, you know, a fairly tough onslaught. They haven't gotten any help from their offense that's for sure. And Michael Vick is the guy who's been making things work with his feet. Third and long for Atlanta. Vick on the sprint out he's going to run. Got a nice block. Out in front of him was Bob Whitfield the 11 year veteran who led the charge and a flag down at the end of the play. Be a tack on another 15. Or is that going to be against Atlanta. You know this this was run all the way like that other play was run all the way. Michael Vick did a nice job of getting out of bounds to protect himself. There's no foul on the play. The tackle started inbounds and carried him out of bounds. There was no roughness on the play. First down Atlanta. Michael Vick's running skills are that of a running back. Here he is. He's patient. Now the hole opens up. There comes the acceleration through the hole. Right like that. There it is. Makes the play. And I agree. That's a good that's call a by good the call. officials. Lamont Thompson <laughs> made the tackle. The official did a great job of seeing the tackle started inbounds, and he didn't try to hurt him. Your third down running back is your quarterback. <laughs> third and long. Could you pick a better one? I don't think so. Great blocks by Christian and Whitfield on that run, too. Vic throws a bullet. This one tipped in the air, almost intercepted, intended for Willie Jackson. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike, Dick LeBeau said of Vic that sometimes with the mobile quarterback, you say it's like having to defend another running back. But with Vic, it's like having the best running back in the game out there. You can do things well, and he's still going to get out on you. He's like the leading scorer in basketball. You know he's going to make plays. You just have to stop him from dominating. But he, like everybody else, has never seen a quarterback this fast. It's like another wide receiver. He's unbelievable. He might be the fastest guy on the field. I think you ought to use him on returns. <laughs> they said that about Jason Seahorn. Vic throws this one away. Well, you want to, I'll tell you something. This was a screen. Do you want to see how much respect Michael Vick has? These guys actually waited. Instead of attacking him, they kind of waited to get themselves set. Because what you can't do is just fly at him. You've got to get yourself under control to make the tackle. Watch this. This is a screen. Tequila Spikes goes up in the air, and then they come down. They're almost like they're waiting on him to do something. You've got to attack him. Bernard Whittington, number 97. Tequila Spikes, 51, just closing in from the outside to corner Michael Vick. Third and ten. Blitz coming. Swing it to Christian and too far. <laughs> That's the second time they've thrown that ball out there to Christian and, and Hawkins number 27 is out there got you know he just zeroed in there's a target on him. I'll tell you Christian sees it. And Joe for somebody who has never played either quarterback or, or running back that looks like such an easy pass but it's not. I think it's the most difficult pass to throw in the game because what you're trying to do is you're trying to put touch and lead a receiver away from you and up the field. You don't have to gauge just his distance but you have to gauge the angle. Would have been a 53 yard field goal so they'll punt instead. And they kill it at the two. Travis Jervy from the Citadel. And a great punt by Moore. 33 yards. Jervy kills it at the two. John Kitna will be the new quarterback for the Bengals when we come back. 
Falcons on top of the Bengals 13 nothing 754 to go first half Gus Farratt is out. Those are his season's numbers updated through his performance tonight. One touchdown, five picks. John Kittner, the starter from a year ago, is in. And Corey Dillon will pick up a yard, maybe two. Kittner lost the quarterback job in preseason, beaten out by Farratt. His quarterback rating a year ago was the lowest in the National Football League even, even though he threw for more than 3,000 yards these are his seasons numbers or his career numbers rather 24 and 24 lifetime as a starter got his shot in Seattle initially Kittner rolls away from pressure and throws complete to Peter Warwick one of the problems that the Bengals have faced in recent time is they've had so many different quarterbacks over the last five seasons for Rod Kitten and Mitchell Akili Smith still on the roster is number three Jeff Blake Paul Justin Neil O'Donnell and you look at the wins they're minimal and the losses of course have bound up but you don't see anybody playing for example Akili Smith has started 16 games for him. That's it in the last five seasons. They need to settle on someone at that position and let him go into it. Absolutely. Third and five. Blitz coming. Kitna goes deep and throws it out of bounds. Intended for Hushman Zada. So Kitna goes three and out on his first possession and the Bengals average starting position tonight has been their own 14 yard line. They were already worst in the league coming in and Harris will have to punt out of the end zone. Well there's a lot of pressure on this defense man for Cincinnati. They don't get a they don't get a break three and out three and out. Gibson waits at his 50 so the Falcons should have excellent field position. And it looks like they're coming after Harris. I believe they only have 10 guys on the field. Big rush and Harris off the side of his foot takes an Atlanta bounce out of bounds at the 24. A 17 yard kick. So special teams comes up big for the Falcons. Let's check in with Chris Berman. Boomer. Hi Michael. Thank you. The 49ers didn't throw it that much to Terrell Owens but look at this first he thinks about throwing and then tucks it in and it's going to get blocked from two of the biggest players on offense he's got Garrison Hurst right there and then quarterback Jeff Garcia right there. This touchdown part of the reason why the Niners beat the Skins 2010 no American Bowl game guys though. That's right Chris and what a run. Falcons set up shop at the 24. I think this is a great opportunity to take a shot in the end zone. Cincinnati shows blitz and they come with a draw play. Duckett. Good call against the blitz and there's a flag down at the end of the play. Face and it's mask. a face mask against Cincinnati. What else can go wrong for the Bengals? Face mask, defense, number 99, five yard penalty, still first down. Second penalty on Oliver Gibson tonight. Boy, oh boy. You know, it's just amazing when you look at a defense like Cincinnati and you have to concentrate so hard on one guy. And, and that one guy is number seven. Of course, Dick LeBeau being a Having been a def defensive coordinator, it's his side of the ball that seems to be making a lot of the big mistakes. The foul was only a five yard face mask. It remains first down and about one yard to go. The red area was an area that Michael Vick really wanted to concentrate on and has worked on. As a matter of fact, when Steve Young came to town during one of the mini camps, it's one of the areas they talked about. How can he become more effective in the red area? 
I personally think it isn't just the quarterback. I think you have to be able to run the football effectively in the red area, and then it will allow you to become a more proficient offense. It isn't just the quarterback position. And what a thrill for Michael Vick to meet his idol, Steve Young. Vick straight back. And throws incomplete into traffic at the 10. And Warwick Dunn was wiped out as he went for that ball. Adrian Ross, number 57, almost gets an interception. <laughs> I can assure you one thing, folks. When that ball comes zipping down through there, it's Be not slow. Because of Michael Vick's athletic ability, a lot of the linebackers and people clog up the middle of the football field. So where you want to work is you want to work outside here. These are the areas that you're trying to work, not necessarily the middle of the football field. Nobody leaves because Mike's in the middle. Second and two. Duckett trying for the first down. And has it just outside the seven-yard line. It will be first and goal Atlanta as they just continue to hammer at the Cincinnati defense. I've always believed that with a quarterback that has mobility and athletic ability to challenge the corner, what you do down in this area is you can run play action and everybody has to not just respect the run but try and come up and protect against the running quarterback which allows receivers to get behind the linebackers and the Bengals best corner Artrell Hawkins limped off after that last play Vic with all day Buying time, throws, touchdown, Finner. Finner has caught both touchdown throws from Vic. This kid is certainly something special. That's a fastball. Watch this. Play action to the right. They try and get to the linebacker. Finneran does a nice job of working, and that, folks, is just a fastball. <laughs> what? This, nobody can throw like this. I mean, it's just a flick of the wrist. And what I really love is the tightness of the spiral. You, ca you catch him in self-defense. That was, remember we talked about a wow play? I promise you, everybody sitting at home watching this game just went, wow. Michael Vick just cutting it loose, does a nice job of turning the shoulders and the hips towards the target. And I believe that these Falcon receivers basically catch the ball purely out of self-preservation. I mean, that's a defensive reception. You, you notice every time when he's rolling out, rolling out like that and it's, it's to his left, to how he squares himself up. Boy, he really gets himself in a position Shoulders to throw. And hips. Yeah, gets himself in a position to throw the football. Remember when some of the guys said in training camp, they said, can you slow it down just a touch? Well, Warwick, My hands are bleeding. Warwick Dunn made an interesting point. He said, when you catch short passes from Michael Vick, you have to focus on catching the ball and then try and figure out what to do after you get it. And it hurts you a little bit. Sure. And that's one of the areas that Jack Burns has talked about working with Michael on, is taking the ball off of something a little bit closer to the receivers. In that instance, give Brian Finneran a lot of credit for just hanging on to the ball as he takes it out of his chest and hands it to the official. And of course, Michael Vick as the quarterback is going to get all the headlines, but how about the Falcon defense? They have not allowed Atlanta past its own, or Cincinnati past its own 34 all night long. Uh-oh, now they're going to get by there. Now they'll get past the 34. The kick <laughs> is out of bounds. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. First down. It's one way to get better field position. Next Sunday night at 7.30, join Chris Berman and Tom Jackson for NFL primetime. Then Dante Culpepper, Randy Moss, and the Vikings travel to Seattle to battle Sean Alexander and the Seahawks on ESPN Sunday Night Football at 8.30. Well, the Seahawks didn't win today, but I'll tell you what, they played some pretty good defense against the New York Giants. They held them to nine points, but they only scored six. John Kitna, who relieves Farad at quarterback, goes out to Dillon in the flat. Corey Dillon not only their leading rusher but their leading receiver coming into the game here are the first five possessions minus 10 with a pick 
Five, two, nine, and five. Ouch. Leaves you with a net of 11 yards. And a 20 to nothing deficit. One of the things about John Kidnett, quarterback, he is more familiar with this offense. And the decision on the starter was only made at the beginning of the season. And Gus Rock didn't get a chance to play much. Dylan on the draw up near midfield. Chris Draft and Patrick Kearney on the tackle. That's Draft out of Stanford. You know, the one thing about Corey Dillon, and we mentioned in the open about him, he's had five straight 1,000 rushing seasons on a football team that has five straight losing seasons. Well, and when you talk to him, he doesn't quit. He has no intentions of ever quitting. If anybody could lay down a little bit on it on, on, on in the game, it's him, but he wouldn't. They have not had a winning record since 1990. They could start this season 0 and 3. And that would pretty much guarantee no winning record again. Timeout. And the Falcons have It'll used a, a timeout. timeout. May not have had the right personnel or the right call on defense. Let's check in with Susie. Well, you're talking about Dylan and putting him in perspective. Rushes for a thousand yards in five consecutive seasons, despite being on what has been a losing team. A team that posted a losing record and all of these years that he's been doing this all five of these years and that itself is an NFL record. He has continued to be a leader by example. Corey Dillon gives 110 percent even when his team is completely out of the ballgame. You'll be able to see that tonight. This guy never stops pushing. And Susie we had uh, the chance to see him against Denver a couple of years ago when he set the NFL record 278 yards rushing also had him game. also had him in his rookie season we did set the rookie record when he broke Jim Brown's record and that was against the uh, the Oilers 234 in that game third and inches Dylan has it and more to the Atlanta 46 and there's never a secret when it's third and short who's getting the ball <laughs> it's not like play action or anything yo 28 just catch it here he comes look at this look at look at Corey Dillon's eyes he's looking for the whole bang he sees it now he's in it and when he's in it he's got his shoulder square and he picked up about five yards on that play Trying to become only the fourth man in NFL history to get a thousand yards in his first six years. Kitna settles in, goes underneath to Dillon. Nice tackle by Keith Brooking. Wouldn't let the big guy get away. Just to put in perspective how important Corey Dillon is to this offense, last year they scored 25 touchdowns. He had 13 of them, both receiving and running. And you see how good a receiver he is. He wants to be like Marshall Falk. When he had a chance to talk to us yesterday, he said, I can do more things. I take great pride in being a wide receiver. He sees what Marshall does with the Rams, and he said, I'd like to be that way. I want to be able to line up and have people think of me as a receiver as well. A testament to his skill. He has been voted to three Pro Bowls. He said he gets lonely over there because he has no yeah, other to talk to. No, well, he doesn't know who to talk to because there are no other Cincinnati Bengal players that go to the Pro Bowl. Well, Takeo Spikes ought to be one. I was just going to say, and he said this is the last year he feels like some of his teammates will go there. I really believe that this Bengal team is close. They just have to be able to find somebody at the quarterback position that can lead this football team and make plays. And of course, the receivers have got to contribute as well. But they have the nucleus with Takeo Spikes and a Corey Dillon with leadership on this on the field. But it's got to come from the quarterback position. The only problem is they're going to wear, wear out Corey Dillon before they get good enough. It's got to come from the top, too. That's owner and general manager Mike Brown. A lot of people have called on him to get another general manager in there and Dylan breaks a tackle and gets the first down. Brady Smith had him short but couldn't hold him. Well you know you, you look at you look at the power. I said how, look how big and strong and nasty he is. Now watch this. He gets himself back to the outside and Brady Smith is a defensive end. Well that's uh, also face mask on Corey Dillon. He's got Smith by the face mask. It's like offensive pass interference. It's a straight on. They put their hands on the face You mask. can do it. They can do it. As long as you don't grab it, it's fine for a back. Well, that one he grabbed, but that's okay. <laughs> Did you see Save the Guys? They call. I don't think Mike saw that. <laughs> Mike didn't see it. Kitna. Incomplete. 
Intended for Westbrook, Ashley Ambrose was there. Westbrook spent the first seven years of his career with the Redskins where he dropped a few balls and he's had a chance to catch a couple tonight. Michael Westbrook pushing up against Ashley. That ball's thrown a little bit behind him. Nice Ashley defense, Ambrose too. Gets an arm in. They brought in Michael Westbrook because they lost Darnay Scott. And they felt like they had a very young receiving core. And they wanted Michael to be a veteran who could help the young guys. But that's all he's done so far. Four catches, 41 yards. And this the third game. Cincinnati trying desperately to get on the board. Draw play to Dillon. There's a marker down. Brady Smith with another tackle. It's against Atlanta. And Cincinnati finally gets a break. Illegal hands to the face. Defense, number 55. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Wade Phillips, the defensive coordinator. Came in here after assured he would be in complete control of the defense and able to run the 3 4 that he really likes. Of course, was the defensive coordinator for Dan Reeves about 13 years ago when he was in Denver with him. First down for Kitna and the Bengals. And there is the two minute warning. It is 20 nothing back after this. It is with great pleasure that we are joined by the former president of the United States Jimmy Carter and as uh, Mr. President is one of five remaining liberals in the country. It's it's a pleasure to have you. <laughs> Your impression so far of Michael Vick. Well and I've watched him the last two Sundays and uh, I think the uh, Falcons should have won both games. Uh, I think he's uh, one of the rare combinations of outstanding running and passing. This is the first time you've seen him in person? Yes, I'm, I met him personally before the game, which is a thrill for me. Draw to Dillon. Corey Dillon down to about the 20. Mr. President, it's kind of a, it's kind of amazing when you see the, uh, the quarterback who is the leader of the football team, as quiet as, as he is, Michael is. I know. He's a really a nice young man. Yeah. You know, well, know. you were that way. You were nice, quite a nice young man. <laughs> well, I was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I played basketball in high school. And, uh, Have you been to any other games? Is this the first one you've gotten to this year? We watch it on television every Sunday. Um, to watch the first two games. Well, if they win, though, you're going to have to come back every week and they play at home. Or even go on the road with them. Kitna hit as he throws incomplete. Well, the owner, you know, Art Blank, who's a wonderful guy, said if we win, the game's not over, uh, then everybody that's in his box has to come back every Everyone. Sunday. <laughs> and he said we can't change our underwear. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to stop that and visit if that's the case. Do you Arthur enjoy Blank has certainly uh, changed people's perspectives of the Falcons coming in. He has done a lot of things with ticket prices, really re-energized this city. Well, he has. The whole, the whole state of Georgia is solidly behind him. Big oh, play for Cincinnati right, here. Third down, and four. Right, take it. This is yours. You think they ought to blitz now? Uh-oh. Kitten throws first down near the 10. Good job by John Kitten spreading the field out. Gets this one off on rhythm using one of his timeouts. He sets, fires it, no hesitation. Nice job by TJ. Pushman Zada. There's a name for you. You'd like you'd enjoy doing this. A minute to go. Yeah, I know if I don't well. <laughs> Mr. President, do you follow other teams or just the Falcons? Just the Falcons. Uh, this is uh, you know, I understand this is the second sellout of a season and my guess is that the next three games here will also be full sellout. I have I had the good fortune in playing in front of you when you were in Washington and uh, the Redskins on a Monday night in a 9-5 football game right. and you were in Mr. Cook's box. That's right. That, I have a picture at home of you sitting there watching me make a fool of myself. <laughs> <laughs> you have a good memory. 
Now these guys want to talk to you about football. I want to know about peanut futures. How should I, should I buy some or not? Well, we're just, we're just not taking up our crop. Uh, most of the peanuts enjoy the on the ground now. A fairly good crop with this last rain. Okay. That's They've it. got a lot of peanuts here in this place tonight. <laughs> First and goal. Kitna under pressure from behind. Lost the ball. And they got it back. Uh, what great hustle, though. I mean, this is this is football awareness. Even though you're blocking, you're doing everything you can to block, you're aware of where the ball goes on the ground. Here comes the pressure on the outside. Ball gets knocked away by theory. And look at Richmond Webb, number 93. Of course, when your guy beats him and sacks the quarterback, you better get it. You're standing and watching. It's a good job by Richmond Webb to go up and preserve at least a possession for an opportunity for a score. The Bengals will have one timeout left, 50 seconds on the first half clock. And this is the only time they have threatened the Atlanta defense. Tonight, coming up at the half, the Kia Halftime Show with Chris Berman will have the fastest three minutes in television. Big Sticks and Major League Baseball's Wild Wild Wests. All coming up on the Kia Halftime Show. Do you get a chance to watch much football? Oh, besides yeah. of, well, I watched Georgia Tech win yesterday. Yeah, I went <laughs> to Georgia Tech. all right, didn't he? Yeah, sure did. Have you always been a football fan? Uh, a lot more baseball. We rarely miss a baseball game. Of course, down here in Atlanta, they've done okay. They what, their 11th yeah. straight uh, title Absolutely. this year? And today was a wonderful game, too. Sorry, we were a little bit busy. We couldn't get to today's Well, Smoltz uh, saved his 53rd game. Wow. And uh, Maddox and Cy Young are the only two baseball players that ever won 15 games in a row for 15 years. We just showed a picture there of Michael Vick. He's got a decent uh, heater. I think he could be a closer for the Braves. Yeah, he probably could. <laughs> <laughs> They've already got a pretty good one. I don't know if you've heard this before, but the one thing that all the coaches talk about Michael Vick is, is his great speed. They have never seen a yeah. quarterback with that much speed. I think that's true. Second and goal for Kitna goes out in the oh. flat to Dylan and Brooking with a hellacious hit. Well, we said at the beginning, Brooking's going to be on. Corey because Dillon. the hit was in bounds, the clock's still running. Watch this. Look at Brooking. Look at his speed getting to the outside. Now he gets square up, but wow. Corey Dillon does not allow him to get any more yardage. Cincinnati tried to run a pick that time, but Brookings did a very good job of getting around it and making a play on Corey Dillon. Brookings' two dogs are named Butkus and Novus. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Well, he grew up here in the Atlanta area. Exactly. I mean, he played high school ball here, college ball. This is the only place he wants to be. And they said they don't like, he, neither one of the dogs like strangers, so we're sending Joe <laughs> over in the morning. <laughs> I think the University of Georgia band's going to be on at halftime, whether or not. Uh, could be. That's what I heard. If you want him to be, we'll go find him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring him in. We'll get that. You're still the boss. <laughs> Only 35 seconds to go now in the half, and it's third and goal. This has been an excellent drive for the Cincinnati Bengals. It's what they needed to be able to get some confidence. Kitna over the middle. That one is complete to Warwick. Warwick fighting for extra yards down to the seven. They're going to kick a field goal here. Okay. <clears throat> Fred Hustling the field goal team on. Fred Weary just hanging on as Peter Warwick tried to break loose and head for the end zone. This will be a 25-yard field goal attempt by Neil Rackers, who is two for two this year. And Rackers finally gets the Cincinnati Bengals on the board. Mr. President, thank you so much for great. coming Talk by. You. We appreciate Good to it. See you again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. John Kitna talking over with his guys. And Gus Farad, he's still there. He's still in the game. You never know when your opportunity comes back up. And boy, did Cincinnati need that drive to at least feel good about themselves going in the locker room and saying, yes, we have an opportunity to be able to make some plays. Thank you all. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Thank you, Four sir. Four seconds to go in the half. I'm sorry, we were all busy getting autographs. <laughs> it's not often that you have this opportunity. 
Michael Vick just sensational in the first half. The numbers really don't live up to what he was able to do. The uh, impact that he had with his scrambles, able to get out of trouble, hit people on the run. Just a magnificent I thought he first half. He's, he's played very controlled, and I, um, that's what Jack Burns, the quarterback coach of the Falcons, wants to see. Certainly, Dan Reeves, the head coach and the play caller, wants him to be able to make plays and get out of bounds and protect himself. And that will do it. That's the end of the first half. The Bengals have a slight inroad at the end of the half and finally get on the scoreboard. But it's still 20 to 3. Let's go to Susie. Dan, your quarterback is clicking in the first half. Just how valuable that ability to buy time. I'll tell you, I'm glad I don't have to defense him, uh, Susie. He does a great job, makes an awful lot of plays on it on. Great throw here to Brian Fennerin. He's got a great arm. Uh, you know, he does, makes makes people miss, gets out in open spaces, and he's always looking to throw the football. So he's exciting to watch. How impressed with your defense? Oh, unbelievable. I mean, you know, if I don't get the own, uh, kick off out of bounds, give him the ball on the 40, I don't think they'd have scored. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks, David. Appreciate it. Thank you, Susie. The score here at the Georgia Dome is 20 to 3. Now let's join Chris Berman for the Kia halftime show. All right, Michael, thank you very much. So uh, you get to visit with ex-presidents, and we have smiling head coaches, and why not? Atlanta leads at 20-3. to uh, A bunch of 2-0 teams went into action today, and the, the good news is that they obviously are not a mirage. They kept on rolling, except in one game between a pair of 2-0s. Uh, and, and one team includes the New England Patriots, who for the first time since the snow game against Oakland were actually favored. They're home against Kansas City. And every game a party for New England. They came from behind against the Chiefs and Troy Brown set a team record with 16 catches. When Tom Brady hit David Patton, the Patriots were up by 14 points in the fourth quarter, which they were twice. But a 42-point fourth quarter was capped by Priest Holmes' last yard of his 180, tied at 38, but out of it, Terry missed her automatic good in overtime. The Patriots win 41-38, they're 3-0. The Jets have beaten the Dolphins eight straight times, but forget about today. Ricky Williams, the first Miami back to have three straight 100-yard games. The Dolphins roll again, beating the Jets 30-3 there. 3-0. Oh. Play the Patriots in two weeks. Saints and Bears battle of 2-0 oh teams with a big play. Under a minute and a half to go. Aaron Burks to Dante Stallworth. Saints down 20. Now they lead 29-23. Last gasp. The Bears have connected on every last gasp. It seems the last year and a half. Jim Miller picked up by Sammy Knight, 29-23. Saints march to a 3-0 lead. The Carolina Panthers, yes, the 1-15 Panthers from last year, they're 3-0. Deion Grant with the pick of Donnie Culpepper. This is going to get ugly in Minnesota. Culpepper, Moss going at it. Lamar Smith, two touchdowns, second half. John Fox's Carolina Panthers are 3-0. They beat the Vikes 21-14. Bills of the Broncos. Brian Greasy, Derrod Smith puts it away. The Broncos hold off the game. Bill 28-23. Denver's 3-0. The San Diego Chargers of Marty Schockheimer are 3-0. Donnie Edwards, defense, 20-yard touchdown, 23-15. They win in Arizona. Cleveland down by 14, under five minutes to go in Tennessee. Dennis Northcutt recovers the onside kick. He already has a special team touchdown, and then Tim Couch finds him, missed Titan tackle, 28 all going to overtime. Phil Dawson, tired to play the feud, good. 33 yards, the Browns win, 31-28. Redskins at the 49ers. Terrell Owens only caught a couple, but look at this. Wants to throw, no, throw, no. Let's run, and Garrison Hurst, number 20, right there. And Jeff Garcia, quarterback number five, right there with the blocks. Niners beat the Redskins 20 to 10. They're two and one. The Eagles, what a week for them. Two huge wins in their division. They were Lafferts. Donovan McNabb to former Packer Antonio Freeman. Eagles home opener, Dallas Dallas 44 13. Trent Dilfer had won 15 in a row, but now he's lost two in a row as a starter. Will Peterson to pick the Giants in a snoozer 9 6 over Seattle. Colts at Texas. Peyton Manning. To Reggie Wayne out of the stately Wayne Manor off the hands of Marcus Coleman. Indianapolis 2 and 1. They win at Houston 23 to 3. New home field, Ford Field, beautiful in Detroit. Joey Harrington, first home start, first touchdown pass to Lamont Warren. 
Lyon tie the pack, but alas, Brett Favre too much. Touchdown to Bubba Frank, 31-17, the pack lead. Down 37-31, oh, the Lions almost pull it off to Michael Ricks, but then Todd McBride saves it. Detroit 0-3, the Packers win it 37-31. This halftime show is presented by Kia Motors. Makers of a full line of quality cars backed by a 10-year warranty program. When we return, the baseball pennant races out west down to the final week. And big sticks coming up. Welcome back to the Kia Halftime Show with your host, Chris Berman. 20 to 3, the Falcons over the Bungles at the half. Uh, baseball pennant races down to the final week. Let's start in the National League. The Giants and Dodgers pretty much going at it for the final spot, although there are a couple yet to be clinched. 1 1 game in the ninth. The Milwaukee, Jeff Kent, back, 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 gone. An out later, Benito Santiago homered, and the Giants win 3 1. They won 5 of 6. Meanwhile, LA, ninth inning heroics as well. Tied 3-3 at San Diego. Mike Kincaid. Double scores Mark Rosalanic. And the Dodgers beat San Diego 4-3. They stay two back of the Giants. They've got six games to play. The Giants still alive, theoretically, in the division race. But they're really eyeing the wild card, where they lead their longtime rival Dodgers by two. Out in the AL West. Oakland knows it's playoff bound. They'd like to win the division. Jermaine live and let die. A pair of home runs at home against the Texas Rangers. Mark Agent Mulder wins his 18th. The A's beat Texas 7-5. Meanwhile, the Angels see rookie Willie Bloom quit. In only his fifth game, go four for four and help Seattle beat him 3-2. So the Angels three behind in the Western race. Seattle still has a shot, but the Angels would have to lose all six games or else will be Anaheim and Oakland going from the AL West. Milestones, John Smoltz, 53rd save, ties Trevor Hoffman and Randy Myers. And for the National League record, the Major League Mark 57. Greg Maddox, 15 or more wins again, um, 15 years in a row. And Fred Prime Dong McGriff hit 30 homers with his fifth different team. Though he'll never pass Dave Kingman uh, for four homers in four different divisions for four different teams in the same year, back in 1977. But we digress, Tiger. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Come on. Well, he wasn't kidding anyone else. He birdied at 17 in the American Express Championship in Ireland to go with a two-shot lead over Retief Goosen. So on 18, he could afford a bogey which this par putt just misses, but the bogey nets him another cool million. Tiger, 66, wins by one shot over Retief Goosen, who had a 62 to finish second Ryder Cup, is next week. 20 to three, the Falcons lead, back with big sticks in a moment. He is number seven, Michael Vick, his first prime time performance, and he has been dominant. The Falcons quarterback of the future has already arrived. 20 to 3 on Sunday Night Football. The Falcons over the Bengals. The Falcons first points in the first half all year came on a field goal with four seconds left in the second quarter. But the story has been Michael Vick. He's been brilliant. Michael Vick has been brilliant but I'll tell you what. Even though the score is 20 to 3, your Cincinnati Bengal defense, the guys have not quit. I mean, they have done some pretty remarkable things on the field. And, you know, when he gets to the outside, Michael Vick, he's hurt him. But other than that, they stopped the run, and they were in bad field position the entire game. Yeah, their offense has hurt him. But I think with John Kitten now having some more experience, being able to operate that offense, I think they'll be able to move the football more effectively. It was a very positive. Uh, end of the first half now they'll get the ball to start the second half but you guys are right about Michael Vick what I've been impressed with is his patience to stay in the pocket long enough to be able to throw the football and then when he needs to run to be able to throw it accurately for Cincinnati Kitna has come on in relief of Gus Farad 
who was 0 for 7 with an interception to start this ball game did not move the club had a couple of drops though in his defense. Brandon Bennett is deep and again a good kick into the end zone two yards deep will bring this one out. Bennett with a blocker in front to the outside across the 30 35 36 yard line. Let's go to Susie. She caught up with Dick LeBeau. Dick, frustration is obvious. Please explain the benching of your quarterback. Well, we weren't moving the ball, and we got to get back in this thing with some field position. If we can't make a first down, we can't get it off our own goal line. We got to keep the quarterback inside. He's really hurting us when he gets outside. Come back and get in the way we got behind it. One snap at a time with some field position. How frustrating is trying to stop Michael Vick? Well, he had a good half. We got to keep him from doing that in this half. Thanks, Coach. Kittner drops to throw and completes his first pass in the second half to T.J. Hushmanzada. The Atlanta Falcons can't feel like they have this game in hand. They've been in a couple of close football games, one against Green Bay and, of course, last week against the Chicago Bears. They lost both of them. Momentum is very critical now for Cincinnati to come out and put something up to be productive in their offense. They start well. Atlanta can't get that caught on their heels. First down at the 47. Dillon behind Lorenzo Neal. Lowers his shoulder and into Falcon territory at the 48. It's just amazing with watching Corey Dillon and you know he, he gets most of his yardage between the tackles and when he comes up in that hole you know you really don't think he's getting a lot and on that last play he picked up five yards. You see the difference in the passing yards 109 for the Falcons only 34 for the Bengals. That's the area that they have to get more out of. Of course, that'll help time of possession as well. Dylan, 45 yards rushing tonight on 13 carries. Kidna out in the flat to Neal. Brooking is out there with him. And Neal delivers a blow. Oh, man. Lorenzo. <laughs> that was Keith Brooking that was out there. Lorenzo Neal ends up. It <laughs> was a heat seeking well, missile. Corey Dillon, first of all, he gets a block, and then look at this. Lorenzo Neal lets him drop the shoulder. Wham! Now, That's Brooking, the way he blocks people, <laughs> only this time he had the ball. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, Brooking still makes the tackle, but he's going to have a headache. First and 10 Cincinnati. Dillon oh. whacked. And it was Ed Jasper, the nose guard, all 293 pounds of it. One thing that's a bit unique about the Atlanta Falcons on both sides of the ball is they've changed the philosophy on offense to simplify the verbiage for Michael Vick. But also on defense, they've gone to a 3-4, three down lineman, four linebacker defense. And part of it, when Wade Phillips got here, he said, you know, they were 30th and 31st last year in a 4-3. We couldn't do any worse. Why not go with the 3-4? Blitz coming, Kittner throws, and Ashley Ambrose with the interception. And now they're going to whistle it down by contact, but Ambrose with the pick. Boy, I'll tell you what, Ambrose, Hushman Zada is the guy that was intended for. Ashley Ambrose took this ball away. Guy made the Pro Bowl in 96 when he had eight picks. Got a big one there. ESPN Sunday Night Football brought to you by MasterCard. There are some things money can't buy for everything else. There's MasterCard. Jack Daniels Original Hard Cola, premium malt beverages unique as the people who drink it. And Mazda, log on to Enhance TV at ESPN.com for a chance to win a Mazda 6 sports sedan and other great prizes. Atlanta's nightlife always buzzing with big name guests like blues legend Bo Diddley. Bo did the boat, didn't he? After the interception, Falcons take over deep in their own territory. And Vic completes the pass to Willie Jackson. To Keo Spikes holds him up and waits for help. I'm going to show you. Right there is Ashley Ambrose. What he's going to do is he is looking back right into the backfield. And what happens as this ball is snapped, 
He never loses sight of what Kitna is doing. You see the outside position. Then as soon as Kitna throws the football, he breaks on it. There's a little bit closer look. Ashley Ambrose. He sees this ball long before Hushman Zada gets a chance to take a look at it and then makes the break on it. Excellent job. Offense, number 65, 15-yard penalty. The down counts. Second down. At the end of the play, Keenan Forney, the right guard, got in an extra shot. He's in there for Roberto Garza, who was injured. Will be out several weeks with a broken foot. Well, they were holding up Willie Jackson. They were trying to strip the ball. So Forney comes over at the end of the play, number 65, and wraps somebody. Paul, offensive line coaches have taught offensive linemen for years that go and protect a ball carry. They call it chipping. Go and chip people away from them. Don't let guys take shots at them. Now, you can't do that in football anymore because it's going to get you 15. Well, you can't do it 10 yards downfield either. They used to do it 20. <laughs> Second and 18. Vic throws a strike to Jackson up near the 30. That ball gets there in a heartbeat. Mike, you make a great point. And here's one of the things about Michael Vick. Everybody talks about Michael slowing down. When he gets back and gets set, he sets up so quick that it doesn't allow the receivers to get down the field deep enough to be able to run the routes so that his drop and the routes time out with one another. That's one of the reasons why they've hammered away on him, slowing down a little bit. And also, when you have a lane that wide to throw the ball in, I think you should be able to complete it. Third and seven. Dunn is the setback. And Vic takes off. Michael Vic. Smart play. Got out of bounds. <laughs> I can tell you exactly what was going on in his mind. I can take you step by step through this entire play. I mean, you can see what Michael Vick is thinking about. This is what he's thinking about. All right, where's where's my wide receiver? He's not there. Okay. All right, now, where's the first down marker? I see it. Can I make the play? Nope. Let me get out of bounds. Well, Takeo Spikes, we said, is the guy that's going to mirror him. This time, Warwick Dunn comes out of the backfield. Takeo Spikes goes with him and does not go with Michael Vick. And he left that, that side of the field wide open. Four rushes tonight, 52 yards, all for first downs. And the 12th first down run this year for Michael Vick. So he has taken off at the right time. And Duckett is spun down by Artrell Hawkins. I'll tell you, one of the things that's really happened, you could talk about Michael Vick and everything else that's going on here. But this offensive line for the Atlanta Falcons, first of all, they're giving Vick all the time in the world. Then they're opening up lanes for him to throw. And now they're blocking on run blocking. And it just took him a while to wear down that Cincinnati Bengal defensive line. We talked about Michael Vick being responsible for 250 yards of this offense. Right now, he's just about at 180. He's right on tick to do what he needs to for this offense to be a success. And the Bengals haven't even cracked 100 tonight. Duckett again. Trying to pick his way. Gets down to the 41-yard line. Duckett. Big kid, six feet, 254. And another flag is down after the plug. Adrian Ross got in with Reggie Kelly, number 89, in a pushing and shoving. And what, what might happen here is if they get Ross as the second guy in. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 57, 15 <laughs> yard penalty, automatic, first down. Reggie Kelly, 89, hits him first. Here they are on the outside. They're fighting each other. Now watch it. Look what Reggie Kelly. Watch what you, watch what happens. Reggie Kelly's there, and it. No, Ross was. Ross, the guy that took uh, this you know, swing. he was holding Ross, and that's got Ross upset. And then Ross hits him in the head. Boy, and the coaches are going to be all over him. That's just total lack of composure. Early you put in, your team in a huge hole. Early in the game, Oliver Gibson gets yep. an unsportsmanlike conduct right away. Now Adrian Ross. Does the same thing. And Dick LeBeau got right in his face. Dick LeBeau was one of the best defensive backs that ever played the game in the NFL. He is still sixth all time in interceptions, and he's not going to put up with that nonsense. Duckett cuts back, takes it inside the 20. 
Paul, how often do you talk about a running back? Fullback, Christian. Well, just, well, not only just a blocker, but when a running back gets his shoulders square up the field, he can be effective. Yeah, he, I tell you, Duckett gets gets square up the field, but he gets a block from the fullback that's just unbelievable. You know, that's that's the worst thing that could happen to Cincinnati Bengals now. You got Vic back there throwing the ball and running when he wants to, and now the Atlanta Falcons, ha they have their running game going. And Warwick Dunn, you saw standing on the sidelines, he's got to figure, okay, last, he, last week, Duckett didn't play in the second half. They have to be concerned with what they're going to do with him. Duck it again, lowers his shoulders and pulls his way to the 13. Well, they're going to give him the ball, let him run up the middle and run the clock. Here he is again, T.J. Duckett. Watch this young man. Square, shoulder square again, up into the hole, and after he's hit, two more yards. And Duckett has certainly gotten the lion's share of the carries tonight over Warwick Dunn. And Warwick Dunn came to this football team, and it was a part of his negotiations as to when he would get here and what he would do to touch the ball about 20 times a game. I think that's the greatest challenge in the running back situation for Dan Reeves. First and ten, Duckett again. Ooh. Takes a hellacious shot from Jawan Armour. <laughs> oh! Jawan Armour said, come in my area, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock you out. <laughs> here it comes. Watch number 33, Armour. Not here. Here. Bam. He hit him helmet to helmet. That's a great shot. And that's a 220-pound safety on a 254-pound running back. That's the reason why he's in the game. They wanted a more physical force in the run game. I and think that applies. very good against the run. Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you very much. Duckett has carried the ball five straight times. Now Vic. And protected himself that time. Got under to Keo Spikes at the three. Now I'll guarantee you one thing. If this was a tie game and there was two minutes to go, he wouldn't have ducked. No, he wouldn't have to, but he's becoming very conscious of protecting himself. This is the play that they call. They let the backs lead, become blockers, and he turns it up. There he does a nice job. I, I think he's got a greater chance of hurting himself trying to figure out how to slide <laughs> than if he just goes and makes a play. I think that's the next discussion they have to have with Michael. Well, at least they're getting him to get down. Yep. That's half the battle. Bring in some of those Braves. You know, Chipper Jones, teach him how to slide. Second and one. Christian. They need to get just inside the three. Well, I'm going to tell you what. They didn't get it just inside the three. They got just inside the four. It's fourth down. What do you do? I think you go for it. You've got Michael Vick on the field. You've got T.J. Duncan, who's been a workhorse. And you've got Bob Christian, who can knock people over. Well, what would you call? Quarterback draw, roll out, get him out of the pocket? I'd get him out of the pocket. I'd fake it inside and put Michael Vick on the edge. Well, you got Warwick Dunn in the back now. Dunn on the toss. To the goal line, touchdown! So Warwick Dunn, who spent most of the quarter watching Duckett run the ball, gets the score. He does get to the perimeter, makes a nice cut up inside at the three. That's just great individual effort. And, and that's actually, a good call. The ball broke the plane. I, you know, but I don't think he had possession of the ball. I would challenge this if I was Dick LeBeau. I don't think he had possession of the ball when he breaks the plane. I think it's coming out of his arms. I'll tell you one other thing that you got to take a look at. His knee is going down. Watch his knee first. Now, if his knee is down and the ball doesn't clear, his knee's down, the ball isn't on the goal line, is it? Good I don't point. It, And I don't think he has possession Cincinnati either. Cincinnati has challenged the ruling on the field. Well, the I ball would. crossed the goal line prior to being down. His, his knee... His left knee is, is down. Now, the question is, where is the ball? Boy, is that fine. Are you talking about a fine line? Well, the result of this, if it's not a touchdown, it will be first and goal from uh, about an inch away. Right. It will be close. See, 
He doesn't. That that ball comes out, and I don't. I, first of all, I don't think he made it. I think you're right, Paul. I think his knee is on the ground. Here, here it comes right. Here's the best look. Look at his left knee. His left knee, when it touches the ground, oh, it's right. Now, that ball's not across the goal line. That's not a touchdown. But what it will be, uh, you are right, Michael, it'll be first and goal at the half-yard line. And it's so hard to tell from the replay whether he fumbled it or whether the point of the ball hit the ground and came loose. I think it'll be probably six inches away is where it'll wind up being spotted. You can vote on this. Log on to ESPN.com or NFL.com. Click on the ETV logo, and we'll update you on the votes. It's about three to two right now to overturn it. And there is Adrian Ross, who had the big 15-yard penalty called against them on this drive. This drive, by the way, has already taken seven minutes off the clock. They've run 11 plays. That's pretty close, really. Now, 60% think it'll be overturned. Of course, that's a lot of people in Atlanta watching. And how many people sit there with their interactive computers and television over 20,000 votes already. See, I don't think he has possession. I think that ball is out of his hands right there. I want you to look right there. But what they're questioning is, was he down before? Now, it's not questioning a fumble. They're not even questioning that. After review, there's no indisputable evidence that indicates exactly when the runner's knee hit the ground. The ruling on the field stands. It is a touchdown. Cincinnati is charged with their first timeout. You know, that is such a fine line. You can't really argue with that call a whole lot. No. No. Dick LeBeau just doesn't believe he's in, and he said, oh, well, what are you going to do? And you... I, now you've got to you've got to be sure right there his knees are on the ground. I don't know what you need to look at to say it's indisputable. Just because you can't see the knees but the legs are on the ground, I think you have to assume it. But well, you can't. You That's can't. The thing. That's right. It's not indisputable. That's the main thing. It was worth the challenge though. Well, the upshoot of this is the Bengals are getting whacked 27 to 3. Dick LeBeau trying to keep the troops fired up. It's getting harder and harder. They're down 27 to 3. 5.07 to go. Third quarter at the Georgia Dome. Cincinnati in danger of falling to 0 and 3 at the start of this season. Another excellent kick by Feely. Brandon Bennett on the return to the 22 buried there. Gerald McBurrows on the tackle on special teams for the Atlanta Falcons. Corey Dillon comes out. John Kitna remains in at quarterback. Remember, he relieved Gus Farratt earlier in this game. We've got a timeout back in a moment. Dan Reeves and his Falcons with a 27-3 lead. 5.02 to go third quarter on Sunday Night Football. It has been all Falcons. The Bengals in three games have scored 16 points. It's not an average. That's total. Kittner and throws this into the ground as the Falcons did a great job. Sam Rogers was right in the middle of the screen. Let's go to Susie. Mike, given all the Bengals' struggles, I asked Dick LeBeau if he has to be part psychologist to pull his team through all the losses. And he said it's not easy to know how to handle so many different people, but it takes flexibility. He has great confidence, though, in his team's attitude and spirit. Unfortunately, they've had their share of adversity and battling, but he maintains his team will play and will fight it out. Kitna throws over the middle, and you've got to be impressed 
with that Falcons defense. That was McBurrows with a big hit and that on was, the tight end Matt Schobel, and that's the first reception for a tight end all year for a Bengal. And that's an area that the Bengals have to get some production out of. They continue to play Levi Jones, their number one pick, who is a tackle who should replace Richmond Webb very soon over at the tight end position. And when you move a tackle over to play tight end, you're basically telling the defense, we can't throw there. And won't. Kitna, the Hushman Zada. Been very impressed with this young man. He was a star in training camp, only his second year out of Oregon State. I mean, this is just a good throw. Watch Hushman Zada. He's going to come right across the middle. They're trailing behind him. That's Ambrose behind him. He can't catch up to him. And but he does make the play. Well, Ashley's trying for the interception. He was trailing, trying to bait him, and the ball got there too quick. Corey Dillon squirms his way to the 49, brooking with another tackle. Thursday night, 7:30 Eastern on ESPN. It's Chris Ricks and Greg Jones as they lead the Seminoles of Florida State, an ACC powerhouse every year against quarterback Dave Ragone in Louisville on college football Thursday. Louisville throws the ball around nicely. Yes, they do. Kitten a straight back. Good protection. Out in the flat to Neal. Lorenzo Neal will get a yard out of nothing. Matt Stewart out of Vanderbilt, number 52, made the tackle. All you need to do is talk to Eddie George of the Tennessee Titans and he'll tell you how valuable Lorenzo Neal is. And then you talk to Corey Dillon of the Cincinnati Bengals, and that now he's his fullback. They say that he is such an important part of the running game, and now you see him even contributing as a pass receiver. He is an incredible blocker. Getting a little sprint out and throws way behind Peter Warren. Kitna, who was the starter last year, had 12 touchdown passes, 22 interceptions. The Bengals have just not been able to get it solved at quarterback over the years. Really, they had a quarterback competition this year during training camp, and Gus Farad only knew at the end of camp. They're going for it on fourth down. Why not? You're down 27 to 3. Kitna Hushmanzada can't handle it. Jerron Bolden was there defensively, but that looked like a catchable ball. Bengals turn it over. The Bengals have turned it over on downs at midfield. They went for it on fourth and three. Did not make it, so the Falcons already up 27 to 3. Take over. Christian and Duckett, the running backs behind Michael Vick. Christian in the flat. 40 35. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Mike, one of the topics of the night that we've all hit on is one of the things that Michael Vick wanted to work on was taking those slides, getting out of bounds, protecting his body, because he may have the speed and moves of a running back, but you can't take that many hits as the quarterback, and he knows how important it is for him to be around at the end of games and to last throughout a season. He's certainly getting the job done tonight. He looks more and more comfortable with every play. And Susie, he's gotten great protection from that offensive line as well. Whenever it's broken down, he's been able to take care of it himself. Vic, smart play here, just throws it away. Flag down. Well, Atlanta, they have 15 first downs. Michael Vick has passed for seven of them and ran for four of them, so he has 11 of them out of the 15. Still waiting on the penalty call. And they have picked the flag up. Illegal shift. Offense. Two men moving prior to the snap. Did not set for a full second. Penalties declined. Second down. 
you know what that just tells you five yard doesn't make any difference to Michael Vick. <laughs> so, no, no reason to go ahead and get, take the downs away from him. But the flag did to Dan Reeves. He was not a bit happy. Warwick Dunn will check in on second and ten. Dunn under pressure and this time they got him. Justin Smith came up from the right defensive end the young man who had eight and a half sacks as a rookie. One of the things they were talking about uh, Alan Rawson who's uh, played for Atlanta is not playing tonight. But he said one thing about him it's like a video game. He says he's the only one that does it. Watch him step up now try to come back out. But that time they got him when he was coming back out. Justin Smith got him. But the thing about it is he can do that better than anybody. He's in he's out and he's gone. Third and twenty one for the Falcons. And the play clock running down they had to use a timeout. We're in Atlanta 107 to go third quarter. More than 65,000 whooping it up in Atlanta as their Falcons gunning for their first win of the year have a 27 3 lead on the Bengals. But now they're facing third and very long from the Cincinnati 45. With a strike to his tight end Algy Crumpler, who was crumpled. Field goal. Kevin Casefahan makes the stop. Michael Vick does a nice job of setting himself in the pocket. Every time he's been able to throw balanced and sets up well, he makes a good throw. Matter of fact, he hasn't made a bad one tonight. <laughs> Wouldn't have anything to do. He He's has just, all night to throw it. He, he is so much fun to watch. Feely will try for 48. He's two for two tonight, and six for eight on the season. And it's good. There's a marker down at the line of scrimmage, and it's against Atlanta. Oh Offense, number 85, 10 yard penalty, fourth down. Brian Kozlowski, one of the tight ends who's a very good special teams player, called for the hold. You see him on the end of the line. He reaches out, he's got it one foot there, and then hooks <laughs> the Cincinnati Bengal coming around the corner. <laughs> nice takedown. Hey, now they have to punt. So now they're out of field goal range and Moore comes on to kick. Hush Muzada is deep. Along with Case Fahan. And again the Falcons down it inside the two. A 37 yard perfectly placed kick. Bob Christian down the ball. Former Cowboy great Bob Hayes passed away this week. He and the Falcons coach Dan Reeves were Dallas teammates, roommates in fact, for eight years from 1965 to 1972. They played on two Super Bowl teams together, including Super Bowl VI when they beat the Dolphins 24-3. Bob Hayes is the only person ever to win an Olympic gold medal and a Super Bowl ring. In the 64 Olympics, he won gold in the 100, and another goal as he anchored the 4 by 100 in a brilliant come from behind effort. Bob Hayes who battled demons his entire life. A very nice man a great football player who changed the face of the passing game with his speed. He could stretch a field better than anyone back then I, and it was it when we had a chance to talk to Dan Reeves about him. He said in the 40 yard dash guys could run off the line and be fairly quick and close to him he'd have guys that run but he said once he got down the field no one could stay with him. 
And Hayes was not just a little sprinter. He was a big guy who was really strong and a courageous receiver as well. I would just like once you know in your whole lifetime you know things you like to do I'd like to be able to dunk a basketball I'd like to be able to run a 40 and like four flat you get a bloody <laughs> nose <laughs> unsportsmanlike conduct called against Atlanta so Cincinnati will get the ball out at the 19 yard line they'll start from there that is the end of the third quarter the Michael Vick show in progress tonight in Atlanta. Start of the fourth quarter, the Falcons with a 27 3 lead over the Cincinnati Bengals. Mike Patrick, Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Susie Culver, and Michael Vick. It was Michael Vick bobblehead doll tonight. Joe and he stole has mine. bobbled the heads of the Bengals. Joe stole mine. <laughs> I have two now. In Tampa, he stole our cigars. Here, he took my doll. <laughs> it's going to be a good year. Kidna out in the flat to first catch for Ron Dugans on the night. He joined us late. Our game track tonight will tell you that Corey Dillon has been held in check. 16 rushes, only 57 yards for the Pro Bowler. Michael Vick has not been held in check. More than 200 yards in total offense. And even though he's only rushed for 56 yards, it's not a huge number. But the runs he have made have been impact plays every single one of them. If he averages that per game, which it looks like he could, it's over 800 yards rushing. Kittner throws short, and this one's complete to Warwick. You know, Keith, Keith Brookie, we talk about him shadowing Corey Dillon. Watch this. Here is a, here's a play here. He's up, he makes the play, and makes the stop. Now, again, when you talk about shadowing someone, that's more than shadow. <laughs> that's throwing him on the ground. But on the last play, he makes a play on Lorenzo Neal. And the reason he was out there on Lorenzo Neal is because Corey Dillon was blocking. Bengals going to a hurry up offense. Brookie made the Pro Bowl a year ago. Had been an outside linebacker. They moved him to the middle, and he was just sensational in there. End of the season. Nine tackles tonight. End of the season last year. The Bengals spread it out, came back, managed to beat Pittsburgh by throwing for over 250 yards in the last six minutes. And they're going to have to do it here if they want to get back in this game. Dylan on the delay, running just as hard now as he did at the beginning of the ball game, even though it's 27 to 3. Well, you know, and you sit there and you say, okay, the score is 27 3, and you're inside 14 minutes of the game, and you're giving the ball to Corey Dillon. Well, there's the reason is because he's the heart and soul of their offense. He is it. The other thing is, is you can't just drop back on every play and expect the offensive line to protect your quarterback. You've got to get one or two runs in there. Maybe he pops a 20 or 30 yarder. Third and seven. Almost caught by Dugans. Nearly made a circus catch. He should have made a one-handed catch because it would have been the way the day was today. Aronde Gatson from the Miami Dolphins made the greatest one-handed catch today I have ever seen. As a matter of fact, there were three or four of them in the league today. This would have been another great one. Gets that one hand out there. Aronde made one like that except he stretched about three feet further. The one that Gadsden made was impossible. Oh. They're going again on fourth down, and why not? Why not? Blitz coming. Kitna hangs in the pocket, throws, and incomplete. Johnson got his hands on it, couldn't come up with it. Jerron Bolden on coverage again. Well, I'm going to tell you what happened. Keith Brookie took his helmet off, and he's walking off the field, and they're gonna, there's going to be a penalty. We got mad about something. Now everybody knows about the helmet. This is at least the third time this year we've seen it happen. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense, number 56. First down, Atlanta. After a 15-yard penalty, timeout. Keith Brooking not very happy. He's complaining about something. Now he looks around. He can't believe it. Here comes the hat.
ESPN Sunday Night Football brought to you by Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil for higher mileage engines. Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. And Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles and proud sponsor of the Heisman Trophy Award. Our aerial coverage tonight, courtesy of Bud Light. They're outside the Georgia Dome. We are inside where the Falcons are taking apart the Cincinnati Bengals 27 to 3. And here's what happened on the last play. Even with the penalty, the Falcons get the ball because Cincinnati did not get the first down, and the penalty came after the play was over. Vic hmm. on the roll, Finneran can't hang on to it. There's a case of just firing the ball too hard, and Michael knows it. When you've got a receiver that open, and this is something he needs to work on. You just don't need to put all that mustard on it. This one just goes right through Finneran's hands. He's got him working the sideline. There's the flick of the wrist. And look at this. That ball goes right through. I mean, if you're, if you're a receiver of the Atlanta Falcons, it becomes defensively catching the ball. You have to protect yourself. Yeah, they're still hot. <laughs> Unbelievable. T.J. Duckett is the running back, and he'll get it on the draw. Duckett breaks this one up to the 49. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Mike, Warren Dunn explained to us some of the reasons for these drop balls that have plagued Michael Vick. Dunn explains that until you get used to that velocity, the velocity, and especially for the lefty, because the ball is going in the other direction, it's very difficult to catch. A lot of guys put their hands up, and it's already hitting them in the chest. You really have to concentrate on that ball and look it in. Catch the ball, then see the defender. You really have to change up your style until you can get used to that velocity of a Vic ball. And I don't know if you ever get used to it if he doesn't take something off of it. I think that'll continue for a long time. Bengals come on the blitz. They jump off sides. Duckett dragging tacklers with him. Down to the 43 to the delight of the crowd. Here's a guy who's 245 pounds with 6% body fat. The Falcons made sure that T.J. Duckett was not going to be left out of the second half of a game again. They put in special packages for him, and it's really just to get the ball in his hands. He's so powerful. Runs a little bit like Jerome Bettis. Up a little bit, good, quick feet. Gets the shoulders square. And not somebody you want to take on toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Bernard Whittington is the injured Bengal. We will check on his condition when we come back. 12-10 to go in the game. Well, you remember we saw Keith Brooking throw his helmet? Well, there's a defense sitting on the bench in the sidelines. The only guy with his helmet on is Keith Brooking. <laughs> He'll never take it off again. He's going to wear it home. Look at that. He's even, <laughs> he's even got it snapped. <laughs> oh, man. Second and two for the Falcons. Duckett got a great block from Christian. Has the first down and knocked out of bounds. You know, any team that thinks that you can play this game in the National Football League or anywhere else and get a running game without a fullback is absolutely crazy. Bob Christian does a wonderful job of helping T.J. Duckett and work done. He catches the ball as well as blocks. There's the balance that you're looking for with T.J. Duckett. 6.6 yards averaged in the second half. I, I think one of the challenges that Dan Reeves is going to be faced with is finding the balance between Dunn and Duckett. And I don't think you're going to have the same situation you had in Tampa with Allstott and Dunn. Warwick is back in there on first down. Vic throws. Finneran gets down to the 33 yard line. The Falcons have simplified their offense this year. And Michael Vick told us how the terminology has changed. This is a totally different system in the way we call our plays. Uh, I can give you an example of a play. King left trip, Z Sadie, B-235 quarterback pass, Wingate wide sneak. And this year is just King left trip, flame 5, 696. So we did all we could, you know, to simplify the offense and, and, uh, and uh, make it as easy as possible to go out there and just play. Joe will translate after this play. <laughs> Much clearer for me. Speak the language. <laughs> Blitz coming. 
Good job by the Falcons to pick it up. And Vick with another strike to Willie Jackson. What Michael Vick was talking about on that particular play, I'll show you the type of verbiage. King left trips, Z Sadie B, 235. Quarterback pass, wing eight, Y sneak. That's 16 words, 16 characters. The first part tells you the formation. The second part tells you the protection. The third part tells you the routes. That was what he had to deal with a year ago. That was something that was very simple and easy for Coach Reeves to call, but something much more complex and complicated for Michael Vick to translate and get to his teammates. Easy for Dan Reeves because it's been his offensive system for 37 years. Falcons have reached the 20. Warwick done. Nice cut. Dunn picks up seven to the 13. Now you get an idea of what Michael Vick is dealing with this year. Same play. King left trips, flame five, 696. You see the formation. You see the protection, flame five, and there's the route. Much easier to communicate. And the reason why it's so good is because it allows him more time at the line of scrimmage. The big kicker is Coach Reeves has had to learn an entirely new set of verbiage. And so it's a little bit tougher for the coach than it is for his quarterback. Because he's the one who calls the plays. Duckett back in behind Christian. Duckett on the draw. He takes it outside. And this time the big guy dragged down by Justin Smith. I'll tell you one thing. That defense is exhausted. Yeah. They've been on the field for an awfully long time. Justin Smith is a very good looking second year player. A lot of hustle, great talent. Justin's chased Dan Reeves' offense around all night and has to be tired. You're right, Paul. Dan Reeves goes all the way back to Tom Landry and the communication that they used. He also had to change from even numbers to the right, odd numbers to the left because Coach Landry was a defensive guy. So Dan Reeves is used to making adjustments to help his players get better. Second and a short two. Dunn hitting the backfield, never had a chance. Crashing through Canute Curtis. Field goal time. So the Bengals defense has held and Feely will come on to try another field goal. He's actually kicked three. One was wiped out by a penalty. Joe DiCamillis, the special teams coach of the uh, Falcons, was talking about Jay Feely's mental state. He said, you know, the kid's tough. He missed a, a game winner possibly last week, but he's not worried about him. He's very tough mentally. He was out of football for a couple of years. They found him in a kicker's camp in Nevada. He played collegiate in Michigan. And another score for Atlanta. They have made it 30 to 3. Seven and a half minutes to go. Thirty to three Falcons former President Carter who was kind enough to join us sitting with the new Falcons owner Arthur Blank going to get himself a chance to have a game ball first win and he has more than sixty eight thousand Falcon fans on hand tonight Bennett from the six good hard run by Bennett out across the thirty yard line. Monday Night Countdown comes your way at 7.30 on ESPN. It's the best place to get ready for Monday Night Football. Then on ABC at 9, it is Monday Night Football. Marshall Falk and the Rams travel to Tampa Bay to take on Warren Sapp and the Bucks in sort of a desperation game for both ball clubs. John Gruden brings a whole new attitude and philosophy to Tampa Bay. They still have kept Monty Kiffin and the defensive staff in order. Unnecessary roughness. Receiving team, number 62, 15-yard penalty, first down. Brock Gutierrez called for a personal foul, and Dick LeBeau has had to he spent more, lecture several of his players He tonight. has spent more time talking to his players about penalties. Stupid penalties. Stupid penalties. Penalties that don't occur during a play, but after or before. So the Bengals are backed up to their 15. Getting back to throw, and this one is completed to Johnson. 
Arthur Blank is the new owner of the Atlanta Falcons until last year he was the CEO of Home Depot. He took that company from three stores to more than fourteen hundred and he treated the situation with tickets here the way you would at Home Depot. If you had a thousand unsold hammers what do you do you have a sale well he had all these unsold tickets so he comes in here and says ticket prices are too high let's have a sale and, and when they come in not only do they buy tickets it's like when you have the sale on hammers maybe the guy will buy a screwdriver at the same time he's in there here they park and he got them more parking they get concessions and Arthur Blank has run this like a smart businessman and he, the, the thing that I think he did which showed me his commitment to football as he brought in football people not only did he keep Dan Reeves but you saw before come up and sit next and that's Taylor Smith who sold the ball club to him the former ownership but also Bobby Bethard now is a senior advisor to this football team and will not be a general manager for the Atlanta Falcons they're still in a search in about two weeks they're going to go out and heat the search up a little bit because Bobby has committed to stay to the end of the season. Also another great football guy Joe Gibbs is a part owner Minority of the Atlanta owner. Falcons. So you've got a lot of people with a lot of football experience terrific men that know the game to help him out. Well he also he said he made a commitment he said I will not rest until I can wear a Super Bowl ring on behalf of everyone in Atlanta and in the state of Georgia. Well the one thing that he did do and you know you're, you're talking about certain instances he just said okay what's broke let's fix it that's right and money had nothing to do with it and here he is shaking hands with the fans signing autographs this is all before the game he also after the Green Bay game had his team get in their uniforms get into vans and drive around the city of Atlanta Shaking hands. Shake hands and go meet them. You don't see that very often, do you? A couple of them got picked up for loitering. <laughs> Kitna throws underneath. This one is complete. Gaylor makes the grab. Another fourth down. We've talked about fixing the Atlanta Falcons. What fixes the Cincinnati Bengals? You've had a lot of high draft picks over the years. Um, you guys continue to make stupid oh. mistakes. Kitna throws incomplete and no I, flag down. I can't believe that it's just a bad bunch of football players. Joe the sad thing for Cincinnati they draft near the top every year since they haven't won since 1990 and it's made no difference. We invite you to stay tuned for Sports Center. Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen standing by big day for running backs in the NFL especially Ricky Williams and Priest Holmes. Major League Baseball's Wild Wild West and Tiger nearly perfect again. This just in. Lamar Smith down in Carolina, who the Dolphins moved on. Doug Big Johnson guy. will take over as the Falcons' new quarterback, and Michael Vick with a tremendous night will get a breather. Vick 16 out of 26, 174 yards, two touchdowns, both to Brian Finneran, and he rushed five times. For 56 yards 230 yards in total offense the rest of the team chipped in 71 and that's really about where Michael Vick has to be for this team to be successful a nice balance of staying in the pocket I thought he did a very good job tonight with his decisions when to take off and run not just to run for yardage but to run to be able to put pressure on the secondary that's where he's going to be very dangerous. Atlanta just working on the clock right now with four minutes and 50 seconds left in the game. Duck it. Michael Vick has got star written all over him. It's his athletic ability that creates options and opportunities. There you see him avoid the rush and it's just a flick of the wrist. I had a chance to watch him up close and personal at the Nokia Sugar Bowl and watched him make throws and anticipate where receivers were going to be. And I think that's such a hard thing for a young quarterback is to anticipate where someone is going to be. The amazing thing about Michael Vick is the quickness with which he releases the football, the speed with which the ball comes, and the accuracy with which he's developing and learning to throw with. Here's the toss to Travis Jervy getting a chance to play running back. 
You know, Joe, the thing about Michael Vick is he is obviously very gifted physically. And Paul, you and Joe and I had a chance to talk to him the other day, and he is obviously a kid who is willing to learn. He is very coachable, and you don't often find that with guys who have great physical gifts. Well, I, you know, I, I think the one thing about him is that he's got so much to learn, and he admits it. I mean, it, it wasn't like, you, you know about, yeah, I know that. No, he doesn't say that. He said, I have to learn that. I've got to do this better. There's so many things that he has to do better. And the most important thing for him is to calm himself down. And he's doing that. I mean, they had, this was the 10th possession. They scored six times, and one was called back because of, and it was a field goal that was, was brought back. So they did offensively what they wanted to do. The other thing, he has what's called athletic arrogance. And what I mean by that is, he's a guy who wants the ball in his hands when a play has to be made. Like a Michael Jordan was in basketball, or like a Wayne Gretzky was in hockey. Moore will punt it away. He's had a very good night. Pops this one straight up in the air. And bounces inside the 25. Let's go to Susie. Mike, you guys have talked about Dan Reeves' tenure in this league. He explained that after 37 years, a lot of things wear on him more than they used to. The losses get tougher. Time to enjoy the wins gets shorter. It's just not as easy to get over things. But he stressed that, think about it, he has been a head coach in this league for 22 straight years. Three different teams, Denver for 12 of them. And recently, Bill Cowher said to him he'd be happy with just 12, period. But Reeves added, just when you think you've seen everything, you haven't. But you have to believe that with this young team, with the new ownership, he's got to be having some fun, right? He oh, is he's, tonight. He's got to be having a ball tonight. Just a short time ago, 1998, they were 14 and 2 and made an appearance in a Super Bowl. And only Tony LaRusa has a longer tenure in the four North American professional sports leagues. Where does he coach, Mike? St. Louis Cardinals. Ah, Congratulations okay. to the Redbirds. Michael's Redbirds. Another bird, the Vic Bird. I like him. Okay, these, I, these I make are, no bones about it. I, I just think he's one of the most unique athletes that have come in, the most unique athlete that has come into the game of football. Kittner throws nearly intercepted. Bolden made the dive and couldn't come up with it. Oh, fortunately for Takeo Spikes, guys, he came into this game and said he was looking forward to it so much from the first time he saw it on the schedule because it was a chance to change everybody's perception of what the Cincinnati Bengals were like. He did everything he could, certainly. So did Corey Dillon, and so did some of the other players. I mean, certainly on defense, they played very, very hard and very, very well most of the game. You look at this football game and you say, was Atlanta that good or was Cincinnati that bad? I think early in the game, Cincinnati was that bad. And really, the Bengals have the worst record in the NFL over that span since they last had a winning record in 1990 and it doesn't really show a whole lot of signs of getting any better Paul well and you, you know you look at what happened here in this defense of the Atlanta Falcons you know we give a lot of credit to Michael Vick but look at how many times they gave him the ball back and that's where it's important he, he can't do anything until he gets the ball and the defense has done a great job in three games, the Bengals have scored six points, seven points, and three points tonight. You can't beat anybody doing that. Boy, are they ready. Another great, great day in football. This season has been unbelievable. New England throwing the ball all over the place. Tom Brady, 410 yards. Troy Brown, 16 catches for 176 yards. Cincinnati will punt it away. Damon Gibson, who was just signed, is back to receive and tells everybody to get away from it. And it will roll dead at the 36-yard line, a punt of 35 yards, no return. So the Falcons will post their first victory of the season. Michael Vick's victory will go down in the books as a starter. Favre, 350 plus. Tim Couch, what a great comeback that was for Cleveland today. They were out of that game against Tennessee. Donovan McNabb, his usual performance, stellar. Peyton Manning getting Indianapolis rolling. Marvin Harrison just had 100 over 100 yards receiving. 
Michael Vick put in a nice steady performance tonight two TDs still has not thrown an interception in three football games. You know, the thing about it is when you look at those numbers 174 yards you say if you just look at the numbers you didn't see right. the game. You know really what did he do. What did he do. Totally controlled the game. Well yeah he? most of that yardage is him. Well the, the good thing too is he made plays when he had to Dan Reeves when we sat and talked to him on Friday said that if you look at the other games there were five instances where we could have made plays and we didn't. I think in this game they'll look back at the film tomorrow and coach Reeves will say there were five opportunities that we had to make plays and we made every one of them. Well I would say well, most well, of the yardage Bengals was his say. but I'm saying most of the yardage in that you're going to see tonight was Michael Vick. I mean this guy this guy just controlled the football game. What will the Bengals say after this. What will happen to Gus Farratt and John Kitna. I think John Kitna becomes the starter. I think John Kitten has got to be given the chance. Gus, Fer Gus Ferrat was given the opportunity to play and start three games. Now it becomes John Kitten's football team. They've got to figure out a way to put some points on the board. That's the biggest problem that the Cincinnati Bengals have. They Joe, can't score points. Joe, you got to slow down. Nobody's listening to you now. Everybody's gone to bed. <laughs> I'm still working. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep doing this thing until the last gun goes off. I love it too much. And John Kitten should be the guy. Now let me see if I'm correct about this. Cincinnati has taken a timeout. They have. With one minute to go in the game, you're down 30 to three. Well, you know what's you amazing? Know what? I'll tell you what's uh, really somebody, amazing. I'll can tell you, somebody I'll tell say you why? Here? You know, yeah, I think I can. It probably doesn't make sense, and Paul won't agree, but that's okay. I can do it. The defense is just flat tired. They wanted to take they're a They're kneeling second. down. I know. They're tired. <laughs> they're kneeling down. Why do you take a timeout? The thing that really gets you, if you're going to take a timeout now, you're, you know when they, they just punted, and they let the ball roll around for almost 12 seconds before somebody downed it. If, if time was that important to this team, why didn't they just down the ball on the punt? Because they're tired. I told you. Come on. Tired. When they're taking a knee, how tired can you be? They may call a timeout again. I hope so. They did. Yeah. They want an opportunity. They want what they want is they want an opportunity to get possession of the ball and try and do something with their offense. I, you know, I don't care what anybody else thinks. I like what Dick LeBeau was thinking here. This team is not going to quit. We're not going to give up and concede anything. They need to be able to get out and do something positive. And if it means going after a punt, getting an opportunity to put the offense back on the field and try and get some semblance of offense together then that's what it needs to happen. I can I can buy that philosophically uh, but I can also see the players saying uh, we don't have a 27 point play. I don't care what the players think at this point. Well I know you don't but the other thing too is you you don't have that many great players on this team and you can't afford to get anybody injured on this team either and that is one of the other possibilities of drawback. I yes. like what Dick's doing. I, well, I, Joe, we know that. Uh, and I like Michael Vick a lot. You know yeah. that too, don't you? <laughs> I think so. I heard of enough. Warwick and Hushman Zada are deep. Oh, Flag is down. down. <laughs> Eight yard return after a punt of 31. Now we check the penalty. And it was motion against Atlanta. They'll refuse it, please. Illegal motion. Offense. Number 36. Penalties decline. First down. See, I'm going to tell you something. Now, Reeves is upset. You talk about coaching at the end of a ball That's game. That's right. He doesn't want to see any, anybody do anything stupid or anything. I mean, you know, this is. This is a teaching process for these guys. You said don't make these mistakes. We can't afford to do that. And it's the time of the game when people the game's over. Obviously people get tired. People get sloppy and you don't want anyone developing bad habits. Hey I tell you the game's over when the wives of the players already left. It's over. Where were they sitting. <laughs> Down here. This would be the first time in 26 home games. That the Falcons have held an opponent without a touchdown. There's one of the things you talk about Paul. Or 26 games overall excuse me. T.J. Hushman Zada went down to make a play on the ball. And he's hurt. Now tell me how smart all that is. He's probably their best receiver. You want to run that by me again. One of the bright young prospects that they have and Corey Dillon the three time pro bowler who was 
always the focus of a defense's attention. 66 yards tonight. 15 receiving came into the game, came into this weekend actually as the second. We're second in the league in third down receptions. And second all time in Bengals history to James Brooks. He's only going to need about 55 yards next week to break that record. And there you see the running backs. Priest Holmes, another great day. Ricky Williams. Boy, Priest Holmes just came out of the shadows. Ricky Williams, Lamar Smith, who the Dolphins gave up. Anthony Thomas with Chicago, the A train. Boy, does Ricky Williams look good. How about New Orleans Whoa. coming back? Jimmy Haslett's got his guys playing hard. <laughs> Emmett continues his quest to be the greatest. 33 seconds to go. Kittner throws underneath this one complete to Dugans. Bushman's out on the sideline and looks okay. And this one's incomplete as Brookings spins down Peter Warwick after he couldn't catch it. Six seconds to go in this game. This one has been over for a long time. The Falcons will go to one and two. The Bengals will fall to 0 and three. And Joe, you were saying earlier, what a schedule they have coming up. Well, Cincinnati's got to play Tampa next week, then Indianapolis, then Pittsburgh. So those are their next three opponents. That's what Dick LeBeau is looking at with his football team. I know anything can happen on any given Sunday, but the Bengals better figure out something good to happen. And that's it. Our final score for the end of the Falcons going to the Bengals three for Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Susie Calver, and our entire ESPN crew. This is Mike Patrick. Good night from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. ESPN, thank you for watching this presentation of the National Football League.